further ado, please help me welcome TJ Malkanji. How are you doing tonight, bro? Excellent. So excited to be on tonight. Awesome, man. I'm fired up to have you back on. It's been too long. Like people say every week, Isaiah, bring TJ back on. You know, they love your preaching. They love your ministry. And I'm like, guys, we got to give them a break. We can't ask guests every single week over and over again. But man, thanks for being on here. Super excited that you're here. And I'm excited to jump into our topic tonight, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes, and I want this to be, I want to preface this whole stream bro with these two thoughts number one the holy spirit makes all the difference and then number two the holy right. spirit is a person there's there's this idea that we go to church our entire life but never encounter god and never experience god and then one day whether you're part of our broadcast or you've been in our meetings you encounter the holy spirit and you go what have i been doing my entire life in church i've been in church my whole life but i've never experienced god and it goes back to joe being like i heard about you but now my eyes see you. And that is where everything changes. I think about for me, TJ, I was in church till about 16 years old. I prayed the sinner's prayer a million times. I was raised in church. I went to all the teenage conferences, all the purity conferences, all the events, but there was nothing alive in me when it came to God. Like there was no hunger, no desperation. There was a spiritual death over my life. And then at 19, when I encountered the Holy Spirit going from being an atheist, that's when everything changed. So this is why I'm so passionate about the baptism of the Holy Spirit experiences with God is because this is where you come alive and this is where everything changes. So for me, the Holy Spirit, man, changed everything and recognizing tonight what we're talking about, and I'll give you a chance here to talk about your experience with the Holy Spirit. Again, that's what changed everything for me, what made me come alive, what gave me conviction, what made me want, want to walk in holiness, what gave me my prayer language, all that stuff, that encounter was just changed everything. But then the second thing is, the Holy Spirit's a person. And we don't, we say this in theory, but we don't really realize like he's a literal person that lives inside of us. So right. we don't live our lives just doing what we want. We have another person living in us that is our helper, our lawyer, our comforter, the one that teaches us, that leads us to truth, that brings glory to Jesus. And I want us tonight, guys, as we go for whatever an hour, maybe whatever it is, to just think the entire time, this is a person we're talking about. The same way I would talk to my wife or my kids, I would never neglect my wife. I would never go a day without talking to her. I would never neglect my kids for three days and not talk to them and spend time with them or acknowledge them. We, as believers that have the Holy Spirit in us, should not live our lives neglecting the Holy Spirit, ignoring the Holy Spirit, thinking he's this impersonal force. So I'm, I'm working on it, man, and I'm on this journey of going like, you're a person, you're a person. The Holy Spirit's a person living my life that way. And I just want to live that way. I want to know him more. I want to get to know him. Talk to us a little bit, TJ, about your experience with the Holy Spirit. What are some of your thoughts when it comes to the Holy Spirit being a person? And then we'll jump into some of the teaching tonight. Yeah, I mean, the scripture says so clearly in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that you're going to receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So that leads us to conclude that if the Holy Ghost has not come upon you, you have no power. It's good. And the only answer to the devil's problems that he tries to launch and attacks that he tries to launch against you is power. The only language the devil respects is the language of power. And you can't have, you can't have power outside the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so at the end of this broadcast, we're going to pray that you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that you begin to walk in a new dimension of spiritual power, that it's not you walking around and hoping the devil doesn't get in your way lest he screw things up. It's going to be the opposite. It's going to be the devil walking around hoping you don't get in his way. It's not you looking under your bed at night hoping the devil's not there. It's the devil looking under his bed at night hoping you're not there because the baptism in the Holy Spirit what it does for you is that it empowers you to become a principality everywhere you go it um, empowers you to become a, a supernatural force that is like a wrecking ball that destroys everything that hell would try to set up around your life you know uh, I heard a sermon once by Reinhard Bonnke evangelist Reinhard Bonnke and he talks about how 
His wife, back in the day when they had a car, they didn't have power assistance on their car. And so when she had to turn the wheel of her car, she had to like, you know, exert physical strength to move her vehicle. Because, I mean, I wasn't alive in those days, but if you are, if you were, if you've ever driven a vehicle that wasn't power assisted in the steering, not like these Teslas today and stuff where you can turn it with your pinky, <laughs> you had to like, you had to, I mean, you had to be kind of jacked to, to, to move that wheel. Well, when power assistance came in and power steering came in, he said that same wife that used to like sweat, I mean, it wasn't that hard, but she used to have to use a, a, an amount of energy to actually turn the wheel. Now, with her cute little pinky fingers, she can turn the wheel Come at on. will without exerting any, any amount of power or energy. Well, that's what life is without the Holy Ghost. It's life without power steering. Come Everything's on. hard. Everything's difficult. Everything requires uh, uh, just burnout energy to get it done. You can do more under the anointing in five minutes than what someone can do in the strength of their flesh in 50 years. Come on. That's what happens when you get power assisted by the Holy Ghost. That same wife with her pinky began to turn the wheel. When you receive power with God, it, it, it changes everything. It changes everything. You look at Peter. Peter who couldn't confess Jesus Christ before a couple of women at a campfire. I don't know who he is. I, I, I've never heard of him. Aren't you a Galilean? Your speech betrays. I, I'm not, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And he began to curse, the Bible says. Then that same Peter, after in Acts chapter 2, which the Bible says, they were all together in one accord, and suddenly there came from heaven a, a, a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and tongues of fire came upon each one of them. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them this ability. The people in Jerusalem got together and said, these men are drunk, because they heard the sound, and they started to mock. These men are drunk. You see, the devil can't do anything to stop the power of God. Come on. The only thing he can do is mock the power of God and get people to back down from it. And that's what you have in a lot of churches. You have churches that mock the move of the Holy Spirit. They mock speaking in tongues. They mock casting out yep. demons. Yep. They mock deliverance preachers. They mock all those things that, that, that actually solves the problems of humanity. They mock the working of the Holy Spirit. And then what do they do? You have a lot of those denominations that called speaking in other tongues demonic and yep. all that. Now they're marrying gay couples in their churches. So yep. you got to wonder what spirit they're speaking from. You know, and if you hang around churches and if you hang around preachers that all they do is mock these things and scoff at these things, you can't expect to ever walk in it. You have, you know, the Bible says you have to, whatever you honor is what God will reward you with. And there's a lot of churches that it's like one Sunday a year, they'll talk about the Holy Spirit, Pentecost Sunday, which is coming up in a few weeks. They'll talk about the Holy Spirit. They might even warn the people today. You might hear some things that you're not comfortable with, Come but on, I want bro. you to know next week we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming and the regularly scheduled programming, you know, the, 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 the the standard, not the standard, the, the excellent service of today's most, most of today's modern churches is not a mighty move of God where people are healed, saved, and delivered. It's, man, we finished on time today. Come on. Oh, man, we got it right down to the T. We got the announcements done in three minutes. We got the service done in 35 minutes. Worship was 15 minutes, and we got them out by 1215. Praise God. What an excellent service today. What man sees as an orderly, excellent service, God sees as disorderly. Come Any on. service that, that there's nobody delivered in, that there's nobody saved in, that there's nobody healed in, nobody receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that is a disorderly service. And what do they call disorderly? Well, I heard multiple people speaking in other tongues at once. Well, you know, Acts chapter 2, there were 120 speaking in other tongues at once. On. And that wasn't disorderly. That was an orderly service. So you got you to gotta make a decision in your spirit today. I'm not going to mock the things of God. And I'm not going to tolerate hearing people that do mock the things Come of on. God. I'm going to listen to preachers like Isaiah. I'm going to listen to preachers that glorify the things of God. That, that, that exalt, that magnify the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you make that decision, it's impossible to live a normal life. You'll start to see supernatural things happen for you and your family. The moment you begin to give the Holy Spirit first place, and like Isaiah said, it's, he's not an it. It's not an it. You know, he's not 
it or, or that or this. He's a person. He's a personality. He can be grieved. He can be honored. He can be believed. He speaks. He has feelings. He has emotions. And when you begin to give the Holy Spirit first place in your life, that moment that you do that, it will be the lowest you'll ever be. God will begin to promote you. God will begin to lift you up. God will begin to, 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 to bring you into high levels of life as you do that. So good. And I would go as far to say, TJ, as we are ashamed of the Holy Spirit in the church. I mean, think about this. We get up and apologize, as you just said, when the Holy Spirit moves, whether it's deliverance. Jesus said, I cast out demons by the Holy Spirit, by the finger of God or by the Spirit That's of God. Right. The Holy Spirit is the one that heals. The Holy Spirit is the one that convicts us of sin, which doesn't happen in the church anymore. The Holy Spirit prays out of us when we pray in tongues. Those are just four things that we apologize in the church. And my question is, Pastor, who are you apologizing to? Why are you getting up there saying, we're sorry That's if the right. new people are here. What are you sorry about, that God is Come moving? On. Are we in a church age right now that is so blasphemous that we're actually embarrassed of the Holy Spirit moving? We're actually ashamed of the Holy Spirit moving. Not only do we not want him to move, when he does move, it puts us out of our comfort zone and we feel the need to apologize. Oh, well, yeah. we have to make sure what? That the, the big time givers don't stop giving and we gotta make sure that the people that own the ice cream shops and the donut shops and the businesses, they're comfortable. I would rather every single person in the church be uncomfortable and the Holy Spirit be comfortable, then the Holy Spirit be uncomfortable right. and everybody in the church Come be on. comfortable. And we have so many churches, the mass majority, that don't let the Holy Spirit move. You think about when Jesus cast out the demon from the man at the tombs, the Bible says the man goes back. He goes from being butt naked in bondage. That's what the Bible says. He's naked, battered in bondage. Now he's in the city clothed in his right mind. And the Bible says the people gathered to beg Jesus to leave. This is what we do in the church. Jesus come and move. And then God starts moving in miracles, deliverance. People start speaking in tongues, prophecy, words of knowledge, words of wisdom. The Holy Spirit, the one that's fun, that takes our order out, that removes the clocks. I don't know if you guys know there was no time limits in the, the first early church. Paul literally preached all night long. And the Holy Spirit begins to move. And we get freaked out that the Holy Spirit's moving. What, what, what day do, when are we going to come to a day where we're freaked out when the Holy Spirit doesn't move? When we're panicking saying, why are we in a church where the Holy Spirit is not moving? Now, I, I don't, it's our broadcast. I don't know who I'm apologizing to here. We, if you're in a church right now where the Holy Spirit is not allowed to move, go find a new church. Period. Period. That's if right. you're in a place right now where they're not allowing the Holy Spirit to move in miracles, deliverance, whether that's born again experiences, speaking in tongues, baptisms of the Holy Spirit, if there's not a place where the Holy Spirit has liberty to move, then I would not be involved in that church. In the same way, I wouldn't invest my money into an investment that would never bring a return. Imagine I came to you and said, all right, TJ, I want you to invest a million dollars of your life savings into this, this business. And you're going to get zero return. There's going to be no return. It's not going to grow. It's in fact, you're going to lose money in this investment. You would run. You'd say, I would never invest in that. Yet the most valuable resource in humanity is time. And there's many of you in the chat right now, over 2000 of you watching that invest your time into a dead church where there's no, no life, no power of God, no miracles. And why are you staying? Oh, because I was raised here. I refuse to raise my kids in a graveyard. I refuse to raise my kid in some dead traditional church where the Holy Spirit's not allowed to move. I would say this, TJ, the Holy Spirit is like a third class citizen in the church. Like the Holy Spirit is, is lesser than in, in the church's mind than Jesus or the Father. We look at Jesus and say, Jesus, you saved me, thank you, which he did. That's a true statement. We look at the Father and go, thank you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit's like, nowhere to be found in the church and but but the holy spirit is just as much god come on help me holy ghost preach right. just as much god as jesus and as the father the three you the three and one the triune godhead the holy spirit is just just as much god in the old testament holy spirit dwelled on people in the new testament the holy spirit dwells in people like we are the temple of the holy spirit i like to say this the address of the holy spirit is us you're the Holy Spirit's address. You're where he lives. And I'm telling you, when you experience him, and many of you will tonight, you can't be the same. You can't be the same without the whole, with, after experiencing the Holy Spirit. Now, you can pray this in his prayer, go to church, go through the motions, and be the same like I was for years, like you were, TJ, for years. 
But when you encounter the Holy Spirit of God, the person of the Holy Spirit, who, by the way, let me just throw this in there real quick and then I'll turn it over to you, whose name is holy. Like, uh, this is going to sound really maybe elementary for you, but I've recently had this revelation, TJ, because I always thought like the Holy Spirit, holy was his first name, spirit was his last name. And then I realized, no, spirit is a description of something. Holy is the name. Like his name, as my name is Isaiah, his name is holy. There's nobody That's like right. him. That's why there's like unclean spirits, right? Spirit is the description. They're unclean, mm -hmm. but in the, in a real sense, they're a spirit. Right. You would never say Isaiah human. My I'm human. That's my nature. That's my description. But my name is Isaiah. So uh, yes, I'm a human, but you never say, hi, Isaiah human. The Holy Spirit is a spirit, but his name is holy. That's literally God's name. So we can't live our lives unholy thinking this person's going to live with us, dwell with us, and be happy with us. The Holy Spirit is longing to not only make us holy, but the other element is we have to be holy. It's not something that just automatically happens. We have to choose to live a holy life to be holy. So I'm starting to be like, okay, holy is his name. Father, you are holy. Jesus, you are holy. And the Holy Spirit's name is holy. So the more I consecrate myself, we know righteousness is a standing, right? We're, we're imputed righteousness. If you guys don't know, when you get saved, the righteousness of Christ is imputed onto you. You become That's righteous. Right. You become in right standing with God. But you're not automatically holy just because you're a Christian. Or else the Bible wouldn't say be holy. If you were automatically holy, you wouldn't need to try. You're just, you're holy. There's nothing you can do. You're righteous. You can't earn righteousness. So you're in right standing. But holiness is a choice you make in a lifestyle That's that right. you live. So when you live a holy life, the Holy Spirit draws near to you. The Holy Spirit wants to be around you and you don't grieve the Holy Spirit. We know that you can grieve the Holy Spirit by forbidding prophecy, for forbidding tongues. There's many ways sin grieves the Holy Spirit. So like, man, I wanna know him. I'm on this journey to get to know this person the same way I'm getting to know my wife. Like I learn stuff about my wife every day, every other day. And the same way when the Holy Spirit's in us, we can get to know him. We can understand him better. We can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So it's something that's left out of the churches. It's something that's not talked about. Many of you have probably never heard a, a sermon on the Holy Spirit in your church. You've never had anyone say, hey, let's pray the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a reoccurring event. But this is really where it all begins. This is the power source. And I'll say this because it's biblical. It is impossible to fulfill the call that God has in your life without the person of the Holy Spirit. If you are not That's baptized right. in the Holy Spirit, you can still go to heaven because you might you may have the Holy Spirit at salvation, which we'll talk about in a minute here. But without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a different event than just being saved, I know people That's argue right. this, you're not going to be able to do what God has called you to do. You're not going to be able to live the Christian life effectively. So that's why we're so passionate about that. That's why we're, we're preaching on this for so long is because you got to get to know this person. Your prayer needs to be, I want to get to know you, Holy Spirit. I want to know you better. Yeah. And now you know why people, uh, why the devil fights so hard against yep. Uh, this doctrine, which it is a doctrine, it's a biblical doctrine, it's found all throughout the Bible, but that's why the devil fights so hard against it. Isaiah said, he's Holy Spirit. Well, how do you, how are you empowered to live holy? By the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who gives you the power to live holy in this present age, to live godly. Uh, without his power, it's impossible to do that. So the devil works overtime to turn you away from a, mes a message like this. You know, if you study... Uh, Bible history in the Old Testament when Moses was walking the earth who did the children of Israel have a problem with God the Father they always were rebelling against God today if you'll hear his voice do not harden your heart as they did in the rebellion they constantly rebelled against God the Father well the moment Jesus came on the scene what did they do well we're Moses' disciple and we believe in God but we don't accept this Jesus fella Jesus was the active agent of the Godhead on the earth when he was on the earth well Jesus dies is crucified and raised again then he ascends on high and he said I'm gonna pray the Holy uh, the Father that he sends the Holy Spirit Come the on. Holy Spirit is now the active agent of the Godhead on the earth. And what do you have Not a lot of churches doing? Well, we believe in the Son, we believe in the Father, but this Holy Spirit business, we don't really subscribe to that. Every active agent of the Godhead that's been on the earth in the biblical dispensations has been resisted by the religious crowd. And you can study it for yourself. There's always been a resistance. 
against the active agent of the Godhead. And the reason being is, Paul says, especially in the last days, there will be many that hold to a form of godliness. So he doesn't say that they hold to godliness. They hold to a form of godliness. They think it's godly. They think it's, it's, it's uh, God exalting what they're doing. But it's just a form of it. It's a counterfeit. Because they deny the very power that's able to set men free. Well, what's that power that Paul's referring to? The power of the Holy Spirit. If you read in 1 Samuel chapter 5, you read of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was captured by the Philistines. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was the housing unit. It was the dwelling place of God on the earth in those days. When they took the Ark of the Covenant and brought it back to Ashdod in the land of the Philistines, they set it by Dagon. Dagon is symbolic of demon power. Dagon was their demon god that they worshipped. The very next morning when they came to check up on the Ark, Dagon had fallen to its face. So they took it up and set it back in his place. The next morning, they check it again. This time, Dagon's head had been severed and Dagon's hands had been cut off and he was fallen to the earth. And the Bible says they took the Ark of the Covenant, they sent it back to Israel and said, never let it come back. And they not, the Bible says they never set foot in the threshold of Dagon until that day. Well, what do you think was in the Ark of the Covenant? It was the, the, the manifest power of God on the earth in those days. What was in the ark now lives in Come you. On. What was in the ark so now good. lives in you. And so just as Dagon could not resist the power of God that knocked it to on its, on its face. You know, the head represents the authority of something and the hands represent the power. Well, that's exactly what the Holy Ghost empowers the believer to do to walk in authority and to walk in power over all the power of the devil so that nothing ever harms you. That's why Jesus said in Luke 24, 49, he said, don't you even dare leave Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. Don't even try it. Don't even try to cast out a demon without being clothed with this power. Don't even try to lay hands on the sick without being clothed in this power. Don't even try to evangelize uh, evangelize without being clothed in this power. Jesus says, until you're clothed with what I'm sending you, don't attempt to do my work. But after you receive the the Holy Ghost, you'll receive power to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to do. You know, Jesus said, what you have seen me do, you will do lesser. No, what you've seen me do, you'll do greater works than these because it's to your advantage that I go away. Because when Jesus started talking about going away, the disciples panicked. They were like, well, what are we supposed to do? I mean, everything we've done has been in reliance upon you. Now you're saying you're leaving? Jesus said it's to your advantage because if I don't go, I can't send you the same power that's at work in me. But if I do go, I'm going to pray the Father and he's going to send another helper. In the original Greek, it's another helper of the same kind that's been in me. It's not a, a lesser Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit's twin brother that's a little awkward at times. It's the same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus. You know, Jesus didn't perform miracles because he was the Son of God. Jesus didn't perform miracles and cast out demons because, you know, he, he, he was God's only begotten son. The Bible says he didn't do one miracle until he received the Holy Spirit. Yep. And when did he have that? Luke chapter 3, 21. Being baptized, he came out of the water, the heavens were open, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And then Luke 4, 14, the scripture says that he returned to Galilee in the power of yep. the Spirit. And he began to heal. And miracles started to happen. Jesus did not operate his ministry uh, apart from the power of the Holy Spirit, he actually tells Philip, he says, have I been with you long ago, long, uh, long enough, Philip, that you've not known me? Understand this. It is the Father who dwells in me that does the works. It is the Father that dwells in me that does the works. He was saying, it's the Holy Spirit in me working through me. You'll never value the baptism in the Holy Spirit if you don't understand what I'm about to tell you. You'll never value the baptism in the Holy Spirit if you're the type of person that's always saying, well, if God wants it done, it'll get done. You know, Come in on. his timing, we'll see it done. 
The baptism in the Holy Spirit, it, uh, you'll value the baptism in the Holy Spirit when you start to understand that God doesn't do things apart from us. God does things through us. He, Ephesians 3.20, the Bible says, Now unto him who's able to do far more abundantly all that we can ask, think, or imagine. How? By his sovereignty, amen? No. He says he's able to do all things above what we can ask, think, or imagine according to his glorious power that is at work where? At work in us. It is the spirit within producing supernatural works without. It is the spirit within producing supernatural works without. You know, uh, that's why Philip, when he went down to Samaria and he preached Christ to them and they all got saved. You notice how when the word came to Jerusalem, which this goes into what I know you, what you want to talk about tonight, the difference between receiving the spirit at salvation and then being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Understand this. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit takes you and baptizes you into the body of Christ. When you get that, you can read that in second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The Bible says that we've been baptized into one body. You can't be saved without the regenerative power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is 100% involved at salvation. That's what we talk about born again. When you are born again, the Holy Spirit regenerates the God nature that was in Humanity, before we fell, but died when Adam sinned. The Holy Spirit regenerates that God-like nature in you. In John chapter 20, Jesus sees the disciples. He appears before them. They're hiding for fear of the Jews. And what does he do? He breathes on them and says, receive ye the Holy Spirit. They got saved at that moment. People think that they were saved. Before. They weren't saved before that because they didn't even understand the, the, the resurrection and all that. They got saved at that moment. When Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, that's when they, they were born again. They received salvation. But notice how Jesus didn't say, that's it, folks. Nothing else to see here. No, he then tells them several times after that, tarry in Jerusalem till you receive the power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You'll receive power. You'll be my witnesses as a result of it. You know, several times he says, I'm going to send you a helper. He's going to be with you forever. He's the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, but you know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. And in Acts chapter two, we see the fulfillment of that. So in Acts chapter eight, Philip preaches at Samaria. They get saved. How do we know that? Because they got baptized and the Bible says there were many disciples there. They believed on Christ. They were saved. They were be believers. They were born again at that moment. But why is it that the Bible says when Peter and John heard about the revival at Samaria, they didn't just say, hey, brethren, let's just lift our hands and thank God for what happened. The immediate reaction was, let's send Peter and John to them so that they can receive the Holy Ghost for as yet he had not fallen on any of them. I mean... If there's not a subsequent experience after salvation called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that passage makes no sense. It makes no sense. And when Peter, John, Peter and John went to Samaria, they laid hands on the people and they ex experienced the exact same experience as Acts chapter 2. You read it four out of five times when the Bible in Acts records that the Spirit fell on the people. Four out of five times it says they spoke with other tongues and they prophesied. The same exact reaction. The same exact manifestation when the Holy Ghost fell. Acts chapter 19. Uh, Paul, he's up in the upper regions of, of Ephesus. And then he finds some disciples. It doesn't say he finds unbelievers there. and he. It says he found disciples. People that were believers in Christ. And he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit after you believed? What do you mean did I receive? I, I'm a believer. I already have the Holy Spirit. Paul, you, you're getting into weird stuff. You must be a charismatic Christian. Did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believed? You know what they replied? We've never even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. We just believed on Christ. That's all. Whatever you're not taught and preached to, you'll never receive. That's good. Whatever you are not taught and preach to from the Bible, you'll never walk in that. You'll never receive from it. So what does Paul do? He begins to preach the Holy Spirit to them, and then he lays hands on them, and they spoke with other tongues and prophesied. So, so you can good. see there's, there's, a, there's a distinction between getting saved, you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ, but then the, so 
here's, if you want to make it simple, there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God baptizing you into the body of Christ. And then there's the baptism in the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus, Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Everybody knows John 3, 16. Well, there's a Luke 3, 16. John the Baptist said, I baptize with water unto repentance, but there's one coming after me who's mightier than I, and he shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and in fire. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is Jesus fulfilling that promise. It's when he takes you, that earthen vessel that you are, and he baptizes you, he immerses you into the fullness of the Spirit. You know the word baptizo is where we get the word baptize. In those days, they used baptizo specifically for Uh, religious baptisms, but also for dyeing clothes. So if you wanted to dye a particular garment into red, the the color red, they would baptizo the, the garment into red dye. What did they do? They laid it, they soaked it, they immersed it. That's why we don't baptize people by sprinkling some water on their forehead. We immerse them fully in the tank. They would immerse the, the raiment, the garment, fully into the dye until the, the garment caught the very nature of the dye. And it looked like the dye. And it smelt like the dye. And it, the dye and the garment became one. That's exactly what the baptism in the Holy Ghost is. Oh, hallelujah. So good. I hope you're catching this right now. I love it's when Jesus takes you. And he put, he baptizes you. He, Im- hallelujah. Come on. He immerses you into the fullness of God's power so that you start to take on his nature. You start to take on his power. You start to talk like he talks. You start to think like he thinks. You start to walk like he walks. You start to have dominion, just like Christ had dominion in those days. That's the baptism you're going to have tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If the devil wanted to keep you from it, he should have never let you tune into this broadcast. Come but it's too late. You're receiving it out. I believe it. Isaiah, I'm telling you, I was praying before for this, and I felt in my spirit, Acts 10, that while they're yet in speech, many will receive the Holy Ghost. I believe while we're yet speaking, the power of the Holy Ghost is being poured out on many. Many are speaking with other tongues. Many are being translated form and going from glory to glory being conformed to the image of christ while we speak in jesus name so good tj man i'm getting i'm gonna fall out of my chair right here so guys what we're saying is and he went into this already the baptism of the holy spirit is different than receiving the holy spirit at salvation so when you get saved when you become a new creature you put your faith in christ you repent of your sins you receive the holy spirit at salvation but the baptism of the holy spirit is a separate experience and if it wasn't Jesus would have never said, ask for the Holy Spirit. Jesus would have never said, wait in Jerusalem to get the Holy Spirit. Paul would have never laid his hands on them for them to receive the Holy Spirit. If you look at when Paul was ministering to Cornelius' household, oh, I'm sorry, Peter was ministering to Cornelius' household. The Bible says, as he was sharing the the word with them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and then they were water baptized. So it wasn't just right. repeat a prayer and get saved. There was an experience of receiving the Holy Spirit. You know, and there's many words people use. Some people say when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's released into your soul. Some people say when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you get the Holy Spirit, but the baptism is the release of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about all that. I just know that there is a separate experience than just being saved. and. There's a lot of guys and a lot of preachers that hate this because they don't want to believe that there's something else for them than just repeating a prayer. But there is an experience with God. And if we if we don't tell you that we're selling you short. And I remember at 19, whenever I decided, Lord, if you're real, when I was cussing at God at the altar and I got saved that night, you don't know my testimony. It's on YouTube. I remember in my head going. I'm not going to pray the sinner's prayer because from the ages of I don't know how old till 16, I prayed the sinner's prayer at every camp, every event, every church service, and nothing ever happened for me. But then when I got baptized, when I truly was born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's when everything changed in my life. So maybe you're in the broadcast. We're not saying you're not saved. We're saying there's another experience according to the word of God called the baptism of the Holy Spirit where God pours his power out on you. You know, there's the baptism of John which was the baptism of repentance. There's being baptized in Jesus' name. There's baptism of water. There's fire baptism. There's baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's salvation. And and so I just want to show you guys this verse here, which is, at salvation, you receive the Holy Spirit. And that's Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you, okay? And when you believed in Christ, watch what Paul says here. And when you believed in Christ, 
He identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. This is not speaking of the baptism. He says he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, not baptizing you in it, but giving you the Holy Spirit as he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give you, uh, give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. And I like to say that the Holy Spirit was the down payment of the promise to come, which is what the Bible literally translates to. So this is what we're saying. You get saved, you put your trust trust on Jesus. It's a free gift. It's by grace. We all know this. It's not works. You receive the Holy Spirit, but there is, and that's the guarantee of a greater reality. But here's the thing. There's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which the Bible talks about in the book of Acts. We see that when Paul laid his hands on these believers and uh, was it Acts 19, we talked about in Ephesus and they received the Holy Spirit. They begin to speak in tongues. We see that in the upper room. They experienced it. Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem, even though they'd already received the Holy Spirit. He said, wait till the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive power. So there's this other experience. We see this in the house of Cornelius where they received the Holy Spirit. This is what we're saying. Now, if, again, if there wasn't a separate experience, Jesus would have never said, ask for the Holy Spirit. He would have just said, you get the Holy Spirit when you're saved. So don't let religious Bible teachers talk you out of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because according to scripture, it's absolutely a separate event that happens. It's a supernatural event. And we're going to tell you right now how to receive this event. How do you get this? So I guess I'll kick it off here and then you can jump in there as well, TJ. Now that we've talked about the Holy Spirit, this is the promise Jesus gave. TJ said it earlier. I just wanted to reiterate this. Jesus said, if I don't go, I can't send the Holy Spirit. So he said, I have to leave to send you the Holy Spirit in a theological sense. Okay. This is the way it works. Just theologically. We know that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are all one. We're all, we, we are Trinitarian. You're Trinity. TJ, I'm Trinity. We believe in the triune Godhead. The nature of God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three in one, three different persons but three of together as god okay we don't we're not gonna go into the whole trinity thing but that's what we believe okay god the father is seated on the throne this is theologically the reality and don't get mad at me this is how the bible describes it god the father seated on the throne jesus christ god in the flesh that came and died for our sins is again these are all equally god there's no one like lesser than in the godhead jesus right now in a practical theological sense if you didn't know is seated at the right hand of the father that's what the bible says the bible says jesus is seated at the right hand of the father he is our eternal high priest i love this forever making intercession for us so if you didn't know you say no one prays for me tj i don't have anyone praying for me i'm alone number one you have the holy spirit living in you that prays through you but number two jesus is praying for you right now he is our forever high priest making intercession on behalf at the right hand of the father Jesus tells the disciples, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send you another helper. Okay, who's, why is there, why is he saying another helper? Jesus is the first helper that God sent, the Father sent his only son. But now Jesus says, and let me, let me just break this down for you. Jesus says, I'm going to send you another helper. And this is in John 14, 15 through 18. I won't go read it word by word, but he says, I'm going to send you another helper. And this other helper is going to teach you, convict you, all the stuff we've talked about, empower you, but I'm going to live in you and speak through the person of the Holy Spirit to you when I go. How am I going to live in you? How is Jesus going to live in us? Through the person of the Holy Spirit. So in a, in a literal sense, The person of Jesus is not living in you, just in himself. He's at the right hand of the Father. In a spiritual sense, he is living in you. Jesus, let me make sure I'm saying that clear because they're going to clip that and make a video about this. I'm giving all these heresy hunters free content here. (laughs) Jesus lives in us for sure through the person of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, I have to leave. Like, I know you don't want me to leave, Peter. Satan, get behind me. I have to leave because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the helper, who's going to live in you and I'm going to live through him. So remember, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. If you've experienced the Holy Ghost, you've experienced the son and also the father. To hear from the Holy Spirit is to hear from the son and to hear from the father. So that's the way it, theologically it works. The Holy Spirit lives in us, but Jesus through the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we're all here watching. We're, we're 50 minutes in. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? Very, very simple. Number one, it's, it, we're going to break this down in simple steps for you guys. You're, you cannot miss this tonight is so we know that salvation you receive the holy spirit baptism the holy spirit empowers you he's released on you it's an experience you have okay number one you need to repent peter tells us this in acts 238 you have to repent i'm I'm sorry to tell you there's no other way 
besides mm. repenting to receive the Holy Spirit. This is to completely turn away from rebellion, sinfulness, say, Lord, change the way I think. I'm turning away a different direction. Basically, repentance is, God, you're right. What you say is right. What I say is wrong. I'm letting go of my old life. I'm clinging on to my new life. I'm dying to self. I'm being resurrected in Christ. I'm wrong. My my own carnal nature is wrong. So that's repentance. And it's not a one-time thing. If you're taking notes, write this down. Repentance is a lifestyle. Paul said, I die daily. So I don't just repent one time, say the sinner's prayer, and I'm good. I can do whatever I want, live how I want. No, it's a lifestyle. Now, Paul Peter said, if you want to be saved, he didn't lead them through a prayer. Peter said, you need to repent. That's what that's the very step number one. That's Acts 17 30. The times of ignorance God overlooked. But now God mm -hmm. commands all people everywhere to repent. So maybe you're watching, there's 3,000 of you, praise the Lord. You're saying, who needs to repent? Who like, is it me? This is who needs to repent, all men everywhere. Men and men and women, okay? When it says men, it's talking about all people. In fact, it doesn't say men, it says all people everywhere to repent. Acts 17, 30, Acts 2, 38, Peter said you need to repent. So you need to repent. And if you want to jump in at any point, just interrupt me, TJ. And the next thing I want to say about receiving the Holy Spirit is you need to ask for it. This is very, very important. TJ, people yeah. say, you know, I don't pray in tongues, which we could touch on this right after this. I want to discuss that as well. But people say, you know, I don't pray in tongues. I don't really believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't really walk in the gifts of the Spirit. I don't walk in the power of God. I'll go out on a limb. Well, I'm not really going on a limb. I'll, it's safe to say some of your favorite Bible teachers will say, I don't need to speak in tongues. I don't need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't need the gifts of the Spirit. I don't need the power of God. And they say they believe in them, but they don't walk in them. So in my mind, you don't believe in something that you don't live out or walk out. But they'll say, if God wanted me, and I've heard them say this, TJ, if God wanted me to pray in tongues, he would just have me do it, which is not biblical, okay? It's something that you have to open up your mouth and do, just like prophecy. Sweet. God doesn't just make you prophesy. God doesn't just make you speak out words of knowledge or wisdom. You have to actually open Sweet. your mouth and prophesy, just like tongues. Or they say, if God wanted me to, if God wanted to baptize me in the Holy Spirit, I would just be sitting on my couch and God would do it. Again, not biblical. So biblically, Sweet. you repent, and then too, you ask God for it. Let me show you this, Luke 11, 11. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? And this is the words of Jesus. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if a son asks for an egg, will the, will he offer him a scorpion? So basically it's like, look, if I'm asking for something good, of course, a, a good father won't give me something bad. And then Jesus says this, if you then being evil, like you're evil compared to God, that's what Jesus is saying, know how to give good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those Hallelujah. who, here's who, this is who he's going to give them to, TJ, are you ready? To those who ask him, how do you get the Holy Spirit? You can't get him without asking the father for him. That's how you get him. Capital H-I-M, he's a person, okay? So he's a person, not a, a, a force, not just a spirit in the sense of, ooh, he floats around, not a blue flame. It's not the Holy Spirit. He's a person, and if you want this person, again, we have to keep saying that over and over, this person to live in you, you have to ask the Father for him. Because he doesn't just come live in you just by chance. This is something that you have to do. Jesus didn't say, pray the sinner's prayer, accept me in your heart. He said, you need to ask the Father for him. So very simple, you ask the Father for him. It's not just God gonna give it to me. It's not just God's sovereignty, which a lot of reformed and cessationists, God's sovereign. If he wants to do it, he'll do it. God ties his sovereignty into, you need to ask for it. Now, how do I know that God's going to give it to me? Like if I'm going to, because tonight we're all going to obviously ask, we're going to do these things tonight. How do I know God's going to give it to me? Because you asked him for something good and he's a good father. Your faith that he's a good father makes you eligible to receive the gifts that the good father gives you. He's not going to give you, well, what if my tongues are demonic? That's not, that's no such thing. Demonic tongues do not happen when you ask the Father for the Holy Spirit because he won't give you something bad if you ask for something That's good. Right. So don't That's worry right. about, oh, maybe it's demonic, it's the devil. It's not the devil. If you, The only way you're going to speak in demonic tongues is if you've given your life over to the occult, which none of you have done, okay? So don't be afraid. If you ask for something good, he's going to give you something good. Okay, number three. Can I add to that? Go ahead, for go the, ahead, add to it. Yeah. asking part? Yep. So when we talk about asking, we're not talking about this like casual like, Hey, Lord, it'd be nice. You know, I'm open to receiving it right now. If you'd give it to me right now, I receive it. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 44, 3, I will pour water on him that is thirsty 
and floods on the dry ground. That's good. There has to be an inward desperation to receive it. To, it's not just this casual asking, oh, that'd be nice, Lord. I, I'll take it. There has to be this craving in your spirit that I'm not going to live life yep. naturally. I like yep. everybody else my life doesn't have to look like everybody else's i know father that you have supplied ample power with your by your spirit and you've sent him not for everyone else to enjoy but me but for me to for me to have and so i i crave for it you know like david said as the deer panteth panting you know what panting is you ever get you ever go on a run where you're so thirsty that you're uh, you ever get your, I have a dog, Golden Doodle, black Golden Doodle, thick, thick fur. You put that dog out in the summer and the summer heat, it was pretty hot these last couple of days. He starts to pant. He wants water. He wants it badly. He'll bull rush through anything to get to the water. That's the same mentality that David painted when he says, as the deer panteth for the water creek, a thirsty animal looking for water. That same like, desperation that same like almost like crazy eyes i ain't gonna stop until i get it that same desperation david said so i pant for you so i'm hungry you know jesus said blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled david was called a man after god's own heart after you know like a like a lion chasing a gazelle uh, won't do life without it that's the same mentality you have to have. An in, you know, uh, Paul says, if you are zealous for spiritual gifts, you know, the Bible says that uh, we're to seek spiritual gifts and we are to earnestly desire the better gifts. You know, earnestly desire, that Greek word is zelu, which is where we get zealous and zeal. In the Greek, it literally means to burn with a fiery, intense passion for, to burn with. To, to, to be consumed with a desire to have it. That's the asking mentality that we're going in. And we're not begging. Understand this. It's not begging. We're not beggarly when we approach our Father. There's an understanding, an expectation, like Isaiah said, that when we ask, God will give it to us. Because if you evil parents know how to give good gifts, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good gifts? So the Holy Spirit is a gift. And you don't, you know, a gift that's under the Christmas tree on Christmas morning, you don't have to beg to have it. It's there. Your Good. name's already on it. But you have to move towards it and unwrap it and then open it. In the same way, we don't beg for the Holy Spirit. God's already made him available for everyone that is born again for this baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so now we, we, the crave that, you know, the very fact that you've been on this broadcast for an hour or whatever, and you haven't tuned out shows yep. that there's an inside crate yes. shows that there's a desperation shows that there's a zeal that you you know there's something there's something else that you know will add value to your life and and that's why god will honor it. and then for your point one on on repentance i'm a hundred percent agree with everything isaiah said you have to repent you have to turn from sin but i'm gonna i wanted to I, as you were saying i felt to, to speak on the other side you've repented you're living holy but you're soaking and writhing in condemnation. I don't know if I'm, I'm worthy to receive the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't know if I can have the whole, after everything I've done. If you've repented, if you confess your sins before God, the Bible says he's faithful and just yes. to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The Holy Spirit is not for perfect people or else nobody would have the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to power assist you to live holy, even as he is holy. So don't use that excuse. Well, you know, I'll have to clean up my life before I'm, I'll be eligible to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, I've repented of those things, but, you know, I still feel like I'm a sinner. You were a sinner. You've been saved by grace. You're now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your sins, as far as the east is from the west, have been blotted out of his sight. God doesn't remember your sin. The devil's the accuser of the brethren. But thank God he's been booted out of heaven. There's no more place found from in heaven. And the scripture says, our sins and lawless deeds, God's will, God will remember no more. And so if God's not reminding you or reminding of himself of your sins and what you've screwed up on and all your mistakes of your past, then what business 
business do you have in loathing, in self-condemnation? I say self-condemnation because God doesn't condemn you. Remember that woman caught in adultery? He said, does anyone stood here to condemn you? No. Well, neither do I. Now go and sin no more. God doesn't condemn. God convicts. God saves. God has removed your sin as far as the east is from the west. And now Paul said there's no condemnation. For those that are in Christ Jesus, don't let a self-condemning mindset keep you from receiving God's best for you tonight. Understand, so, you now have God's righteousness come on. and everything God promises in his word is for you. It, it's for you. You don't have to, you know, let me just tune some things. No, you can't even tune things up in your life outside of the power of the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do it in your flesh? Paul said, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. And he's referring to the whole, the Holy Spirit. So I just so, wanted to add that. So good. And you you just hit on the third thing I was going to say. Number three of receiving the Holy Spirit is you got to be thirsty. Let me show you guys this. John seven thirty seven. On the last day and the greatest Great day of scripture. the festival, Jesus stood in a, and said in a loud voice. This is Jesus shouting. I know some of you are like, don't shout. Jesus was quiet. But this is what the Bible says. <laughs> he said this in a loud voice. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. But look at what happens in verse 39. By this, he meant the spirit. So we know he's not talking natural. It says, by That's this, right. he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So he's saying, you have to be thirsty. If, if you are thirsty, you can come to me. But again, he's speaking of a That's later right. time. So thirst is essential. You have to really, really be thirsty. You can't just say, oh, if it, God gives it to me tonight, he gives it to me. Thirst is the strongest desire in the human body. When people are thirsty, they don't care about anything else but getting something to drink. So this is what you just said, TJ. You already hit on it. It was perfect. Be thirsty. And then lastly, I just want to touch on this. Number four of receiving the Holy Spirit is you need to drink. Okay, Jesus said in John 7, 37, you must drink. And this is so simple that people don't talk about it in a natural sense. To drink, okay, I have a bottle of water here, means to receive something within by decision or physical act. So to drink this water, this water, shout out to Costco, is not going to drink itself. I got to actually pick it up, open it, and I have to participate and I have to drink it. Right. So God doesn't just... Here's the Holy Spirit. We have to actually participate with a decision of will. And a similar process of drinking this water is required in receiving the Holy Spirit. It's not a passive thing. Drinking is active. And Jesus said, John 7, 37, you must drink of me. Speaking of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to do that in a little bit here. We're going to pray, obviously, our prayer tonight if you haven't received it. Now, here's the beauty, TJ. Many that are watching have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but many have already received it. Okay, I've already received it a bunch of times. So, oh uh, man, there's nothing for me tonight. Wrong. The Bible says, do not be filled with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in the Greek te tense, it is to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus blew the Holy Spirit on the disciples and they received it. Some said they didn't receive it, which how could you say that? It literally says that he blew the Holy Spirit on them. They received it. And then they received it in the book of Acts in the upper room. And then if you go on, they receive the Holy Spirit again. The place shakes and they all receive the Holy Spirit. So receiving the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing. Don't believe the lie. It's a continual. So tonight, guess what? I'm asking, I'm thirsting, I'm hungering, I'm repenting and I'm going to ask for the Holy Spirit again. There's another baptism. If you think about being filled with wine and I look to my old life where I used to drink a lot. Okay. We'll just say that. Let's just say that. Okay. We'll end there. And I didn't just drink one time. I didn't just, let me just get drunk once and I'm done. Put away the alcohol, never drink again. I was constantly drinking. So the Bible uses drinking wine as an illustration of being filled with the Holy Spirit. So it says, don't drink wine or alcohol, which could ruin your life. It literally says that, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, which obviously leads to life. So in the same way you drink continually, which you shouldn't be, if you're a believer, you shouldn't be drinking at all, but the same way you would in the world, mm -hmm. the same way you drink of the Holy Spirit. So let's go over, let's tag team, we'll trade off, we'll shotgun these. I know we've been live for an hour here, um, but let's talk about signs we have the holy spirit or what does the holy spirit do in a believer's life these could be synonymous right how do you know you have the holy spirit some of you watching like i don't know if i've gotten the holy spirit now let me before we go into this let me just say one thing about 
speaking in tongues okay just really really quick here we're not going to do a whole teaching on it we have both of us have teachings on this i have in-depth teachings on the difference between speaking in tongues with interpretation and praying in tongues because they are a different thing in fact the gift of speaking in tongues the actual gift in first corinthians 12 is kinds of tongues so like literally built into the gift is different kinds of tongues that's the actual wording so there's not just speaking in tongues they're speaking in tongues with an interpretation and there's praying in tongues and what people get confused about is they say oh we shouldn't speak in tongues on the mic the or preach in tongues or this and that's what paul was saying you shouldn't preach a message in tongues without an interpretation we agree on that but Paul wasn't saying you shouldn't pray in tongues because Paul said, I pray more than all of you, but Paul wasn't praying in tongues in public. So the question TJ is, where was Paul praying in tongues at? In his private prayer time. So again, yeah. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 12, there's a difference. We have videos on this. I won't go into detail on speaking tongues and praying in tongues. Here's what I see TJ, you, could, you, you maybe have a different belief, but I've seen this in a lot of occasions. People pray and say, I want the Holy Spirit, okay? They ask for it. They've already been saved. They get baptized in the Holy Spirit and they don't pray in tongues. Now, my belief is this. Again, I know it's controversial. Take care. You don't have to agree with me, guys. I'm just saying from my experience, what I believe the Bible teaches and what I've seen. Many people that I pray for, they say I've never received the baptism and I pray for them. And I'm like, no, you already have. I could already tell you have. I feel I discern you've received it. Well, they say, well, I don't have it because I don't pray in tongues. But that's not the only indicator. But my response is, Maybe you're able to, you just have never opened up your mouth, okay? Because some of you watching me right now, you can pray in tongues, you've just never opened up your mouth and done it. And you're waiting for God to force you to pray in tongues. And God is not going to, in some cases he will, but usually he doesn't force your mouth open and force you to pray in tongues. Like for example, right now, I'm not praying in tongues, am I? No, God, God will not for the hour and a half we're gonna be live or two hours, God will not force me to pray in tongues. In fact, I've never been on a live stream and I've live streamed over 500 hours. I've never TJ been on a live stream and then just started speaking in tongues and couldn't stop it because that's not the way God works, okay? Now, right now, I'm gonna pray in tongues. Ramba sombo do kinda, yamba robo sampantia sombo do robo kinda basate, okay? I just did that. I chose to do that. I prayed in tongues. I'm not asking for an interpretation. I'm not speaking a message. I just prayed in my heavenly language. Yours may sound different. TJ is going to sound different, but that was my heavenly language. We don't need interpretation. So I see a lot of people that have the ability, but they've never opened up their mouth. And so I'll pray with people, TJ, and say, look, you've already asked for the Holy Spirit. Because I see people, TJ, for years saying, God won't baptize me. And I go, well, how do you know? Well, I don't speak in tongues or I don't pray in tongues. And I'm like, have you ever tried? And they're like, well, no. Then, then how do you know you don't have the Holy Spirit? So many of you watching right now, you have the Holy Spirit. You've been baptized in it. And as we pray tonight, we're just going to have you speak out. We're not going to teach you to do it. We're not going to say, start by saying, Sean, we're not doing that. <laughs> what we are saying is open up your mouth by faith, just like I just did, and let that rivers of living sure. water flow out of you. Ask the Father for the Holy Spirit and then begin to speak out. Because again, I've, spent, I've done this with hundreds of people that have been praying for the Holy Spirit for years. And then all of a sudden, I had one lady came to me in Arizona. She said, brother, I've been a Christian for almost 50 years. I've asked for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for almost 40 years. And she said, and I've never prayed in tongues. I've asked God, the only thing I want is to be able to pray in tongues. Like this dear lady, she wanted it so bad. And so she said, will you pray with me and believe right now? And in my mind, I'm like, 50 years and 40 plus years she's been praying for this bro and i told her i looked her in the eye i said you're gonna get it right now are you ready because i already knew tj that she was already filled with the holy spirit i knew that she had already asked for it god is not going to sit there for 40 years and say you can't have it sorry so i knew she just needed to open her mouth by faith and speak it out so i said sister I believe right now, by faith, we're not going to pray double-mindedly. We're not going to say if it's God's will. We already know it's God's will. I believe right now, as we pray, you're going to begin to speak it, and you're going to begin to pray in tongues. And she said, okay, brother, I have faith. I believe. And we started praying. Within less than two minutes, I just started praying in tongues. I started encouraging her, hey, don't pray in English, because sometimes you pray in English, and then you're like, how could I pray in English and tongues at the same time? You can't. So I said, sister, just start speaking it out. You got it. You, you have the Holy Spirit. You've been given it. And within two minutes, she's praying out in tongues as loud as you can imagine praying out in tongues crying tears down her face it, in my mind tj again i could be wrong on this but in my mind she wasn't receiving the baptism in that moment i believe she had already received it by asking for 40 years she probably already got it lot years ago but she had never by faith spoken out in tongues i hope i'm making it sense here guys i hope you guys are all tracking but now like there's people in the chat that could speak in spanish but they haven't spoken it in years 
It doesn't mean you can't speak in it just because you haven't. So some of you, because you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can speak out in tongues and you're going to do that today because you've already received it. Okay, so let's just shotgun here. I'll go with the first one, then I'll toss it to you and we'll just go quick. Ways and signs you have the Holy Spirit. First sign I have down here, and these are in no particular order, is you love the truth. That's a sign of having the Holy Spirit, John 14, 16. And I will pray to the Father and he'll give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you love the, you love the truth. One of the signs that you're an unbeliever, you're in rebellion, or you don't have the Holy Spirit is you don't love the truth. If you're one of those believers that wants someone to tickle your ears, you don't have a love for the truth, then you probably have never received the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit makes you a lover of truth. How do we know three questions to test if something's the truth? Does it represent Jesus as he truly is? Does it run in harmony with scripture? And does the Holy Spirit bear witness? When you have the Holy Spirit, he will bear witness to the truth. You'll listen to preachers and you'll sit there and go, ah, that's not the truth. Like something doesn't feel right about what he's saying. That's because the Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you're a lover of the truth. If you find yourself not loving the truth, or being angry at the truth, it's probably a sign that you don't have the Holy Spirit and tonight you need to ask for the Holy Spirit. Go for it, TJ. What is a sign that you have the Holy Spirit or what is something the Holy Spirit does in our lives? Well, I'd say something the Holy Spirit does that's of, uh, it, it's it's invaluable, is his guiding ministry. Good. How he directs people. Um, the Bible says in Romans eight fourteen, they that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. In John chapter 16, 13, I believe it is, Jesus said, how be it the spirit of truth when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit guides you. God, you know, some people theoretically believe God's interested in their lives and stuff, but they don't actually practically live that out because That's when good. they have a hard decision to make, they don't, they don't even take a day to Come fast on. and pray for it. You know how many times I've 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 talked to people that are like, you know, I've I have this decision to make right now. It's gonna change my life. I don't know if I should stay at this job. Or and I said, have you fasted and prayed? Have you asked us? You know, he, he, you know, the Holy Spirit's name Come is on, literally bro. counselor, right? He's a counselor. He'll counsel you to make the right choice. And whenever he gives you a uh, direction, it's never to a lower place in life. It's always to a higher place in life. I could think of Isaiah. Uh, not the prophet, but Isaiah. Well, I mean, I, I could see he was a prophet already. But <laughs> anyways, I could think of Isaiah in 2019. Watching, I watched the video where, I don't know if it was like to October or something. And the yeah. Lord, uh, he, he was saying how the Lord, the Holy Spirit showed him that in 2020 travel would be shut. This isn't like March 2020. He's saying this like a lot of people were saying, you know, I, I, I hear from the Lord. It's like after the fact. This was in 2019. Nobody knew what COVID was. I, I hope I didn't like put a flag Go on your it. video or anything. Nobody knew what that, what, what that was. Nobody was talking about it. it until maybe December of that year. That's when people started talking about it. it, it this was like in October of 2019. And he's, he's prophesying by, by the Holy Spirit, saying that 2020 travel would be totally hindered and that the Lord showed him, develop your online ministry yeah. and start to invest financially and, and time and energy in building your YouTube and Facebook platforms. Well, had he just been like, oh, I don't yeah. know if that was me. Though. No, he followed the word. And what did it lead to? The ministry, Isaiah's ministry, has seen more people saved, more people delivered, more reach than he's ever. I mean, I guarantee you that 50 years of travel would That's not right. have done what the last two two years has done for what the last for week has ministry. done. And with the last week came with the last out week. of listening to the Holy Spirit's direction. You could try and reason things out in your own mind and you know just try and intellectually come out with the best possible outcomes or whatever. And you might be right sometimes, you might be wrong. You got to leave it up to, to, you're just going to gamble with your life. Or you can do the Bible way of doing things, which is to seek out the Lord's counsel. And Isaiah 48, 17 says, it's the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. And he leads you in the way that you should go. 
Then he actually rebukes the Israelites. He says, oh, had you listened to me? Oh, had you heard? Had you just listened to my counsel? Your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Most people go through rough times, not because God's got to lead you through the wilderness to get you to the promise. Not because of all that. It's like God's got to take you through the valley to get you to the mountain. Amen. No, your own Poor yep, choices yep. brought you to the valley. Your oh, own wow. poor choices brought you to the wilderness. Your own poor choices are keeping you around that mountain. That's why, you know, Deuteronomy 2.24, you've dwelt around this mountain long enough. I believe this. For many of you watching, you've dwelt around a mountain long enough because you've just, you've gone to brother so-and-so for counsel. You've gone to brother X, Y for counsel. You've sought counsel in everyone but the Holy Ghost. But the God is speaking to you right now. Seek out my counsel. Listen to my voice and my leading. And you'll know, you're not going to go around this vicious cycle of frustration. God will lead you. Psalm 23, when the Lord is your shepherd. And Jesus said, I am the chief shepherd. He that hears my voice will follow me. When you make Jesus your shepherd and the Holy Spirit's uh, voice is what you're following. Psalm 23 says, this is what will be the byproduct of that. You'll not lack anything. You're not going to lack peace. You're not going to lack joy. Jeremiah says he leads his people out with joy and he, he causes them to go out with peace. Whenever God leads you, there's joy. Whenever God leads you, there's peace. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are not pressures forevermore. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. He says, they, uh, you who make the Lord your shepherd, you'll not lack anything. For he leads you by what? by turbulent waters. No, he Come leads on. you by still waters. He makes you to lie down in green, fruitful pastures. Yeah, he leads you in his righteous paths for his name's sake. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. See, people hear preachers like this and they say, this guy sounds like he doesn't believe anybody ever has to go through anything. That there's no challenges in life. No, challenges in life. Listen to this. Challenges in life are inevitable, Come but on. defeat is an option for a child of God. Challenges in life are inevitable, but defeat is an option. You, you can choose to be defeated by going your own way. There's a way that seems right unto men, but its way, its end is the way of death. Or you can make Jesus your shepherd, follow his way. And even if you walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear evil. You don't to fear the attack. You don't have to fear the onslaught of hell against your life because you know that victory is guaranteed for the child of God. And he said, my rod and my staff will comfort you. I'll anoint you with fresh oil. I'll make a table. I'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. I'll anoint you with fresh oil, God said, and your cup will run, oil, run over. And goodness and mercy, surely goodness and mercy, will follow you, chase you down all the days of your life. The importance of the, the, the guidance ministry of the Holy Spirit is of utmost value because when you walk in his leading, goodness and mercy is not something you're striving to get. It just follows you. It just comes behind you. It chases you down. Life becomes much easier when you do it God's way. And the only way to do it God's way is, is, is by the Holy Spirit, where he downloads, like a software is downloaded into a Come computer, on. he downloads his instructions, his guidance into your spirit and, and see what it produces. So good. I want to go on this one. You hunger for the scripture. This is something in a very, very That's practical great. sense for me. I always, growing up in church, looked at the Bible as this dead book. There was no nothing desirable about it. The moment I received the Holy Spirit, the Bible came alive. And 11 years later, I have an, an quench, I don't know how to say, insatiable desire, mm -hmm. right. unquenchable hunger. That's the best way to say it. An unquenchable hunger for the word of God. Like I could read it, read it, read it, read it for hours, 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 and still hunger for more. And this is the beauty of the Bible is the more that you partake of it, the more that you read it, the hungrier you get. Right. In a real natural sense, the more you eat, the less hungry you are. In a biblical sense or a spiritual sense, the more you consume the word of God, the hungrier you get. If you look at John 14, 25 through 26, 
Jesus said to his disciples, These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all the things I've said to you. So two important things Jesus says about the Holy Spirit here is the Holy Spirit teaches us and the Holy Spirit reminds us. If you look at the Gospels, the Gospels were written 30 to 50 years after Jesus died. And the question becomes, how did the disciples remember everything that they experienced? And the, the answer is the Holy Spirit reminded them and brought it to the That's remembrance good. and the scriptures were God breathed Hallelujah. by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says this, the Holy Spirit leads us into truth. So when you read your Bible, that's why I've said before, Mormons read the Bible, Jehovah's Witnesses read the Bible. How could they read our Bible and come up with a different conclusion? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit leads us into truth. Everybody in this chat that's watching, that's received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, knows the moment they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, they opened the Bible and they were like, what? This thing is alive. It, it's coming out right. at me, talking to me, and it's alive right. and well. If you look at 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Uh, NIV says is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. So the scripture is God breathed, but the Holy Spirit is the one that illuminates it and makes it come alive. And, the, and really, here's the question. Who can teach better about a book than the author? Like the best person to teach you about a book is going to be an author, not someone that studied it. We can teach you, and that's great. We are teaching you tonight. But how much more can the Holy Spirit teach you than me or TJ? He's the one that can teach you. He's the author of the book. He's the one there. So for me, a, a major sign, if you look at Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is alive and active. It's alive and active. The word of God is not stagnant. It's not a book on your shelf. Some of you need to understand that when you read the word, the word reads you. When you pick it up, it picks you up. The word is alive. It's a mirror and it's active. And it's, it's, like, it's a sword, the Bible says. It penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes, Hebrews 4.12, of the heart. So the word of God, when you get the Holy Spirit, you get in you get an unquenchable hunger and i pray tonight that you'll get hungry for the word of god after receiving the holy spirit okay tj give us the next one uh i will say the holy spirit the baptism in the holy spirit one of the things that it does that does is is it empowers you to pray powerfully that's good. that's good empowers you to pray powerfully and consistently there's a lot of people i'm sure you get the messages all the time isaiah i i have a dead prayer life i'm not consistent I pray one day and then three months off and I, I want to pray so desperately. And even when I do pray, it's like 30 seconds in and I feel like I've been there for three hours and I, mm. it's just this belaboring task. Prayer was not designed to be a belaboring task where it's burdensome and irritable, like makes you irritable when you're doing it. Prayer is communication with the Father and the Holy Spirit is the one that actually empowers you to communicate effectively with yes. the Father. He knows the Father more than you you know the Father. And so the Holy Spirit enables you to communicate effectively with the Father. There's a lot of people that they get into prayer and it's like five minutes goes by and they're just saying the same things over and over and over again. They're repetitive and they're boring. Their prayer life sucks. And, you know, I've been in prayer, prayer meetings in, in churches and I know who prays and is baptized in the Holy Ghost and who is just trying to make a show mm. or whatever, or they, they don't, you know, they, they, you can tell they'd have no private prayer life based on like how they pray publicly. A good point of advice is if you don't pray privately, don't take the mic and pray Go publicly. Ahead. Everybody can know everybody that's spiritual knows come it. On. You know, they, they just go through this, you know, father God, we just come here today, bless this service, father God. And it, it's, we can tell you, <laughs> And when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you leave that realm of elementary prayer and, and, and you know, religious recitals. And you get into actually substantial power-packed prayers. It's good. That's what Romans 8.26 says. We don't know what we should pray for all the time, nor how we ought to pray for certain things. But the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. If you feel like your prayer life is weak, that's exactly why you need the baptism in the Holy Spirit tonight, because the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer infirmities, our prayer weaknesses, so that we don't have to be embarrassed when we pray. There's, there's, and it's not about having this great vocabulary in prayer. It's not about praying in King James English where people need a thesaurus just to like 
interpret what you're saying. It's not about eloquent speech. Paul said it. I didn't come in eloquent speech or in persuasive words of human wisdom. I came in the simplicity of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and my preaching was plain, but it had something that other preachers don't have, and that's the demonstration of the Spirit and God's power. So it's not about being this, you know, high IQ level type of prayer uh, of prayer. It's it's about the the power, the weight that is tied to the words that you're praying. It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that makes your prayers weight weighty, where there's a literal weight. I know I said you you you've been in this long enough. When a preacher comes up, they don't even have to say much. So there's some preachers, all they say is Hallelujah. And it's like the Holy Spirit just invades the place. And you know that guy, that guy prays. Come Which on. Jesus said, when you pray, don't be like the religious yep, hypocrites yep. that they just pray openly and publicly to be seen by men, but they have no private devotion. I tell you, they have the reward. But when you pray, go into the secret place, shut the door behind you. And your father who sees what you do in secret, he'll reward you openly. And that's that. That's part of that public reward. That people can, there's, when you speak, when you speak even simple things, God loves you. It's not this like, well, I've heard that a thousand times. No, even if people have heard it a thousand times, there is a, a quickening power on that word when you speak it, where it comes alive in people. You know, when Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they were all pricked to the heart. Mm. They were pricked. They were cut to the heart. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Not only in prayer, when you're praying, uh, when you're praying to God, where, you know there's weight on your prayers, but weight on your words when you're ministering to others. People get cut to the heart. There's a conviction, power that comes on your words. That you can say the simplest things, but they're backed by God's power. Jesus, you know, the Bible says the simple people heard him gladly. So it wasn't like he was some a little seminary graduate that was just coming out with these wonderful Spurgeon level sermons. He, he spoke plainly to the people. He preached very elementary stuff. He just, it, it wasn't complicated stuff to hear. If it was complicated, then the tax collectors and sinners wouldn't have come to him. But he preached plain stuff. But the Bible says the power of the Lord was present when he spoke. The Bible says when he spoke in the synagogue, Luke chapter 4, he took the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and he read, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. When he sat down, the scripture says, The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him, and they marveled at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. The words, the actual Greek, words loaded with grace. That's what the Holy Spirit empowers you to do. Not only, you know, point one, which what I said was your, your prayer life hits a whole new level. And, you know, talking about praying in tongues. There's three things, th three reasons why you must pray in tongues. That it, it, it shouldn't be an option. Oh, that'd be nice if God... No, you, you should seek diligently to pray in tongues. Because one, when you pray in the Spirit, the Bible says you pray the exact will of God. Yes, you yes. can never pray amiss when you're praying in the Spirit. Yes. Because it's the Spirit praying through you. So he's not praying things that are outside God's will. You're praying exactly in line with God's will. And the Bible says if we pray according to his will, we know we have the petition. We know we have the request. We know God's going to do it for us. So one, you're praying the exact will of God. Two, the Bible says that uh, in Isaiah, this is the refreshing that I will refresh my people with. With stammering lips and clamoring tongues, I will speak to my people. So mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, when you pray in the Spirit, ref he refreshes you. There's actually a refreshing that comes on That's you. Good. I mean, we were talking before. There, uh, there are times where we don't feel great. You know, we're about to preach or whatever. Isaiah had this Sunday. A lot of he, times. <laughs> he slept like three hours or something. Yeah. And, and had to preach several times on Sunday. But what do you do? You just complain about it? No, you pray in the Spirit. And when Come you on. pray in the Spirit, there's a refreshing. God said in Isaiah, this is the refreshing that I'll refresh my people with, with stammering lips and a clamoring tongue. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, even though you've grown weary in well-doing, you've grown fatigued, you know, you still have a physical body that's going to grow tired sometimes. Well, when you grow tired, 
pray in the spirit and you'll have the, the, the energy of the spirit quicken your mortal body. That's what Romans 8, 11 says. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, he'll quicken. Not your immortal body, not your eternal body, your mortal body. That's talking about here and now. Smith Wigglesworth used to say, if you'll get up in the morning every single day and pray in the Holy Ghost, you'll never know a day of weakness and you'll never know a day of backsliding. You'll so never good. know. And then number three, Go ahead. Three thing that the Holy Spirit does when you pray in the Spirit, why you should seek to pray in tongues, is He charges you up. Charges you up. Come Beloved, on. pray always in the Holy Ghost. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. That word building in the Greek, literally, in today's vernacular, we'd say like charging a battery. It, he charges your battery, your battery of faith, so that you can believe for the impossible. So your faith's not dormant. Your faith is an active living force producing wonderful things. So, so one, he, he empowers you to pray, sign of the Holy Spirit. And then two, he, he, he puts weight on your words. When you evangelize, it's not some dull, boring thing. You know, there are a lot of preachers that they can preach the same message that I preach. This, they can say the same words, but the, nobody's getting saved, delivered, or healed. They're yep. set free. It's not about the right words. It's about that dynamic, that dunamos, that comes behind the word to produce infallible proofs. So good. Let me go in the next one here. <clears throat> you live a supernatural life, okay? Here's what the, and you touched on this. Here's what the Holy Spirit does when you have him. He elevates you from living a natural life to a supernatural life. You no longer look at sickness, demons, disease, whatever you're going through as, oh, that's just this, but your lifestyle becomes where healing the sick, casting out demons, getting dreams, visions, supernatural encounters are not rare, but are the normal Christian life. The calling that God has given every single one of us is a call to a supernatural life. Basically the Holy Spirit, when he lives in you, you no longer are bound to the human constructs. If you look at Hebrews 6, 4 through 5, one of my favorite passages in the Bible, it says those who were enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift, which is obviously the Holy Spirit, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. So five things the Bible says, the writer of Hebrews, you are enlightened, you've tasted the heavenly gift, you become partakers of the Holy Spirit, You've tasted the good word of God, which is like we said earlier, the word of God comes alive and you've tasted the powers of the age to come. So notice he says, you just taste through the Holy Spirit. We taste the powers of the age to come. You get a hint, an appetizer, a sample of what the next life is going to be like. And if you think of what is the point of sampling something, it's so to whet your appetite for eventually the real thing that's coming. If you look at what Paul says, in Ephesians 1.13, he says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. And this is what I read earlier, but this is a different translation. Who is a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance. So the Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing the inheritance of the next age, the supernatural life. One day, if you didn't know this, you're going to slip out of this natural body, out of this, what the Bible calls tent, and you're going to live in a spiritual realm, in the spirit, with God for all of eternity. Right. So what mm. the Holy Spirit does, according to the scripture, is he's not only a deposit, but according to Hebrews, he is a taste of the age to come. So you get a, a brief taste of what life in heaven will be like through the person of the Holy Spirit. He elevates you, he enlightens you, you become a partaker, and you live a supernatural life. If you want to live the supernatural life, you got to have the Holy Ghost. You can't That's live right. without the Holy Spirit, a uh, supernatural life. Let me give one more here, because that was a quick one, so let me just give a bonus one here, is you pursue a holy life. If you're not pursuing holiness, you probably don't have the Holy Spirit. First Peter 1.15. Right. But just as he who called you is holy, so you be holy in all you do, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Hebrews 12, 14. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. 2 Timothy 1, 9. He has saved us and called us to live a holy life, not because anything you've done, but because his own purpose and grace the grace was given in Christ before the beginning of time. Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true proper worship. Romans 6, 22. But now that you may be set free from sin and become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. What is the point of all this? When you have the Holy Spirit, you desire to live a holy life. 
If you're not in pursuit of a holy life, you probably don't have a holy the Holy Spirit. Holiness is a per, is a sign you're pursuing the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm gonna give last one, and then TJ, you can give a last one, and then I wanna have you pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're doing good here, okay? Last sign for me, and then you can go, TJ. You have the Holy Spirit, is you walk in spiritual gifts. Somebody said this in the chat earlier. They wow. said, can I function in the gifts of the Holy Spirit without the Holy Spirit or the baptism? No, you can't. I have people say, you know, they get saved, TJ. You probably heard this a bunch of times. And they say, oh yeah, you know, when I was younger, I used to get like visions of the future. I used to get this or that. I, I must have the gift of prophecy. I just didn't know it until I received the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. You cannot prophesy, have the gift of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, a uh, gift of faith, gifts of healing, discerning of spirits, uh, interpretation of tongues, speaking in tongues, working in miracles. I probably missed one or two. Any of these gifts without the Holy Spirit. So you did not prophesy before you had the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the ability to prophesy. If you were doing that before the Holy Spirit, it was probably a demonic spirit or a spirit of divination. It wasn't the Holy Ghost. Because right. again, the Holy Spirit gives you the power to function in spiritual gifts. So no, you can't pray in tongues, you can't speak in tongues, and you can't function in the gifts without the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit's gifts, not the disciples' gifts, not the apostles' gifts. It's the Holy Spirit's gifts that manifest in us to be able to do these things. Go ahead, TJ, give us one more sign or thing the Holy Spirit does. I know we've given you guys a lot tonight, and then TJ is going to lead us. We're going to repent, and we're going to ask, and we're going to receive the Holy Ghost, and it's going to be awesome. So go for it. Yeah, Romans 5, 8 says, uh, 5, 5 says, Now the hope of God does not disappoint because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. So the Holy Spirit, when, when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, there's like a baptism of love that takes place where you learn, you learn not by, you know, a textbook or, or something, but you learn from God himself. You know, the Bible says to the Thessalonian church, you yourselves are taught by God to love. He empowers you to love. He empowers you to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. He empowers you to live a devoted life to God and put him first, prioritize him. But I want to focus on how the Holy Spirit empowers you to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. You know that Good Samaritan? Go ahead. The Good Samaritan uh, parable that Jesus preached when uh, in Luke. He talks about how the priest came by and saw the man bruised broken and did nothing. That, that, that's like a, a, a reflection of ministers in that day. Jesus was calling out the ministers that they... They didn't actually care for people. They were just trying to go up the religious hierarchy for titles and fame or whatever type of glory ministers receive. And, and their, their motives were all screwed up. If you're in the ministry, let me tell you, if you're in the ministry and you're, I've heard this, I've actually heard this come out of people that are in the ministry, out of their mouths. They said, well, I, I, you know, I, I don't really, I, 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 I really can't stand people sometimes. I can't stand people. <laughs> Well, then you shouldn't be in the ministry, brother, because the ministry is about people. Yes. Now, I'm not saying there aren't people that are going to irritate you sometimes, but to say I can't stand people or, you know, I, I just I'm not a people person. If you're not a people Go person, you're ahead. not a ministry person. God, John the Apostle Jesus actually person. says, if you don't know how to love your brother whom you see with your eyes, and you say you love God whom you can't see, you're a, a liar and the truth is not in you. So it's the Holy Spirit that despite what people might do to you, because a lot of people that say that it's because they've been hurt by yes, people. Yes. They've gone through, they've had ne negative experiences with people. They've been screwed over. They've done things to pour into people and they were, they were, uh, they, they responded with a negative reaction or whatever. They, you know, there's a lot of people that were hurt in the ministry and all that. That's fine. But the Holy Spirit makes you like a rub, like a rubber bean where whatever people do to you, it just bounces off, off of you and bounces off, uh, uh, just bounces off you. It doesn't get to you. Nothing that the people do get, that's what Jesus, they were crucifying him. And he was a lamb led to the slaughter and he opened not his mouth because love compelled him to the cross. He even said, forgive them, Father. They don't even know what they're doing. He couldn't do that without the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. One of the, the, the things, one of the primary things that the Holy Spirit imparts, the abilities that the Holy Spirit imparts into the believer is to love people unconditionally, no matter what they do to you, no matter how much they've, they've hurt you, no matter what they've said against you. You know, Jesus said, if all you do is love people that love you back, what good is that to you? You're no different than a tax collector and a sinner. They do the same. 
Tax collectors love. He was saying even the worst of the worst will do good to people that do good to them. Real love is when you bless those that curse you. Yes. It's when you pray for those that spitefully use you and persecute you. It's when you love your enemies, people that are out to get you, out to hurt you, and yet you're still responding with love. Now, I'm not saying you get walked on everywhere you go and you just, you know, you, you keep on associating with people that are constantly, you know, berating you or whatever. You know, you... It's one thing to love someone, and then it's one thing, it's another thing to come, like spend every waking minute of your day with that person. There are people that aren't gonna ride in your boat for your entire life, but you still love them. You yes. still show the love of God to them. And I wanna remind you, you know, that's uh, how you react to people is one part of God's love, but then how you care or comfort people is another part of God's love. God's love is not, hey, brother, I know you're in need. You know, you're in my prayers. Amen. When you have power to actually help that person. James says, how can you say you have the love of God in you if you see someone that is hungry and cold and you don't give them food to eat and you don't give them a blanket to sleep in? But all you do is say, God bless you. May he Go keep ahead. you warm. Come on. You can't love it. God's level of love is not, I'm keeping them in my prayers. That's one part of it. But if you have the power to actually help someone, Jesus was moved with compassion and he healed the sick because he had the power to do it. The love of God doesn't just get you to feel bad for people. Loving God is not feeling bad for people. Anybody can do that. The Holy Spirit empowers you to have the love of God for people, which enables you to actually do something about their situation. Mm. To actually comfort the downcast, to heal the sick. You know, you just see someone in a wheelchair coming, oh, that's a shame. The love of God doesn't say that's a shame. The love of God says, thank you, Father, that I'm anointed to heal the sick. And then you go and say, hey, brother, can I pray for you? And you minister the resurrection life of God into their body. That's so what good. Peter and John did. They were on their way to the hour of prayer. They saw the man lame, who was a cripple, who had never walked. And he was asking for money. He could have said, you know what, Peter, let's give him you know, what we were going to use for lunch today. That'll at least get him by. He said, he said, silver and gold, we don't have. Meaning, they weren't saying we're poor. We're, we're, we're a dirt poor church. You know, we really have no money. They were saying there's not enough silver or gold in the entire world to, to solve paralysis. And to this day, there's not enough silver or gold on earth to solve paralysis. But they wow. said, such as we do have. What made them say that? It was God's love in them. They did it. If seeing people in bondage does nothing for you, come you don't on. have the love of God come in your on. heart. Come on. I can't stand seeing people being squashed by the devil, being chained in his bondage, being held captive by his power. Wow. When everything necessary for their breakthrough has already been purchased by the blood of Jesus. That's what, that's what fuels what I do. That's what gets Isaiah to relentlessly on. be on live stream. You think he, you don't think he has, he has, we have four kids? Yes. You can't he even remember. You're like, I can't keep track. Goodness sake. You don't think he could be year. at home right now? Well, he's at home, but you don't think he could be like, you know, sitting Come back on. and watching some movie with his kids, enjoying a nice restaurant with his, he could be doing that. But the love of God, yes, com yes. Paul said, the love of God compels me to preach Christ. Yep. And when there's not that compelling force in you to help others, the love of God's not in there. The Holy Ghost puts that in you. Where when yes. you see people hurting, you're not like, oh, isn't that a shame? No, I got to do something to help them. Why do you think we do Hope Fest Crusades? Hope Fest, our Hope Fest Crusades, we go into the inner city parks. Of, 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 of cities all across Canada and wherever else the Lord will lead us to do it. And we don't, we don't go into the suburbs and the nice areas and where everyone... No, we go into the, the, the shady parts of town. And we, we set up a, 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 a festival, a hope festival. And we give away all kinds of stuff. You know, we, we have bait. We bring people in. We, we offer free TVs, whatever, free Xbox. And we get the people to come out. Because Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. Come on. So a good fisherman knows that you need good bait to attract certain fish. So that's what we do. What, what is going to get people to come out? Because it's, you know, gone are the days where you can just say, you know, uh, this minister's in town, he's healing the sick. And then the whole crowd shows up. 
So what do we do? We, we do giveaways. We do fun activities for the kids. We give away food. We give away food boxes uh, to, to nourish them. We meet their physical needs. But then I get up on stage, and the Come same on. way I'm preaching right now, I preach in it, it, with passion, with fire, and I tell the people that the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the work of the devil that's been set up over your life. You don't have to put up with it another day. You can be set free from addiction. You can be set free from sexual immorality. You can be set free. And as I do that, you can people that came in, you know, we, we had prostitutes saved in Saskatoon Come in on. August last year. And it wasn't like a word of knowledge. That's a pro The way they were dressing, they, were, they come back the next day and they're dressed totally different. You couldn't, you couldn't teach a prostitute, hey, you should probably dress a little more modest at these events. You couldn't teach them that. I didn't sit them down after and say, hey, you know, these are, these are church events. You should probably dress differently. I just out of love preached the gospel of salvation. I was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it's still the power in 2022 to Come heal on. and deliver those that are oppressed. And what did the Holy Spirit go to do? To convict, to change the person. He did an inward work. What, what fuels me? What? motivates me to set up those things that aren't cheap. You know, they're like 30 grand just to do one three-day event. And we want to enlarge that, you know, and, and the budget's only going to grow. But what empowers us to, what motivates us to do that? Paul said, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. Why? Because knowing the terror of the Lord, we do work hard to persuade men. Knowing that there's a real hell to shun and a real heaven to gain. I refuse to stay comfortable in my little religious bubble in the four walls of my church and just say, well, thank God I'm going to heaven. Thank God I've got my passport. While a world, a lost, dying, sighing, crying humanity is marching towards a hell that they don't even know exists. It's the love of God that imparts that, in, imparts that into the people. You can't fake it. You can't Come work on. it up. I didn't love people when I wasn't saved. I, I didn't care for people. Me neither. I'm not a peop I was not a people person. When I got saved, it oozed out of me. It bubbles up. Like, like, like what Isaiah said, out of your belly, hallelujah, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And part of those, no, it's rivers, rivers. The Holy Spirit has many rivers. And one of the, the channels is the channel of love. And that love's going to flow through you from this moment on in Jesus' name. Pray for us, TJ, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Listen, everybody in the chat, listen very closely to what I'm going to say. If you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're going to repent and we're going to ask tonight. As we said earlier, TJ is going to lead us. If you've already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, then do the same thing. Repent and ask and receive it again. And then after TJ is done, he's going to pass it back to me. And I'm going to pray in tongues in the spirit okay I'm not ashamed of it don't care i'm going to pray in tongues with you and you're going to open up your mouth we're not going to teach you how to pray in tongues i know people want to make a video saying isaiah Saldivar teaches speaking in tongues that's not what we're going to do i'm going to pray in tongues no interpretation we're not speaking a message for all the religious people that are like oh you didn't interpret it we're going to pray in tongues we're going to lead you guys and we're going to all pray in tongues together you're going to open up your mouth and you're going to by faith begin to Pray in tongues. How am I going to do that, Isaiah? Because you got the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is going to pray out of you. So right now, before we do this, I need you right now, take off all your unbelief, dust your crusty religious off of you, all the <laughs> things you've been taught about, oh, the Holy Spirit isn't for today and God can't move and you need to have an interpretation, brother, and speaking in tongues if God wants you to, all that. Just dust it off, take it off you, all the unbelief. Well, I've prayed for 40 years. I told you about earlier a lady that was 40 years praying and God get, she got it immediately. So you don't have to worry about it. God's going to give it to you right now. Don't doubt it. Don't think, well, I've already tried this before. Doesn't matter. Today's a new day. We are not going to start this prayer by being bringing a case against God. If, you, if you're in this chat right now, there's over 3,000 of you live right now. That's crazy. That's massive. Think about 3,000 people, how big of a building that is. If you're in this right now here, listening to my voice, which you are, because I can see the numbers on my screen, and you're saying, well, I've already done this before. I didn't get it last time. This is what you're doing. You're bringing the case against God before God, asking God to move. And you're saying, this is why I don't believe in you. Please move. That's unbelief. And the Bible says you'll get something for that. And that what you'll get is nothing. Paul says, if you pray that way, expect right. to receive. What am I going to receive? 
Nothing. Nothing. Imagine getting called. You put a raffle ticket in and they call you and say, you've won. You won. There was a million dollar raffle and you go, what did I win? And they go, nothing. That's what happens when you pray with unbelief. I hope that sticks in your brain. You get nothing from God. So deep breath. Not going to walk in unbelief. God's going to give it to me right now. I'm going to be baptized. It's not always going to be an experience that I feel in the natural. Okay. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. So we're not looking. Right. Now, some of you may feel something in the, it. Like really, it may transcend from the supernatural to the natural. You may cry. You may get shaky. You may feel something, but you may not feel something. So don't determine it on, oh, I felt goosebumps or I felt heat down my back or in my head. Don't determine whether you receive the Holy Spirit on a feeling. We receive by faith. Okay. And then, and then we speak out by faith. So we pray by faith. So TJ, lead us. And then whenever you're done, pass it back to me and I'll, I'll pray in tongues. And then we will we'll pray in tongues together and we'll see God give you this gift. Many of you are already going to get it. You just need to open your mouth and and uh, speak it out. So go for it, TJ. This was a powerful broadcast. So I really believe God is going to baptize many yes. people in the Holy Spirit. There's been so much word. And, you know, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes to confirm the word. And there's been so much word that's gone out in this broadcast. It'd be, it'd be, it's, it's, it, it'd be very hard to not leave this broadcast without receiving the full baptism in the Holy Spirit. It'd be really hard. It's actually more of a challenge to not be baptized in the Spirit right Come now on. than it is to be baptized in the Spirit. So I, I just felt in my spirit right now, as a point of contact, I want you to release your faith. You believe that God's going to baptize you in the Spirit? I want you to take your right hand and I want you to put it on your belly. Because Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's where your spirit is. It's right at the core of who you are. You know when the Bible says, within the heart of man, and it talks about the heart of man. It's not talking about your physical heart. It's not talking about the organ of your heart. It's talking about the very core of who man is. And Jesus identified where the spirit of man is. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers. So take your right hand and put it right on your belly, and we're going to pray that you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and I want you to come in agreement. I want you to come in agreement with what I'm saying right now. And, 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 uh, and, and like Isaiah said, by faith, don't wait for, you know, you know I, I get so many people that say, you know, I, I just, I, I feel like there's words at the tip of my tongue, but it doesn't come out. What, what more do you want? Just open your mouth and speak, and you'll see like a river, if you'll do it in faith, it's like when you turn on a faucet. You turn on the faucet in faith, and the water, it might, if it's been blocked for a little while, it might take a little while to like trickle out, but then all of a sudden it's like, it just full force uh, comes out. So that's how it is. So put your hand, right hand, right on your belly, and we're going to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit that you've made available for the believer. Thank you that this wasn't something for the apostles. And that was made clear when Peter preached and said, this promise is for you and for your children and for your children's children, as many as would call on the name of the Lord. And we've called on your name. We are saved. We're purchased by your blood. But you said as you made us new wineskins that we would be qualified now eligible to receive the new wine, which is the Holy Ghost. I ask you, Father, right now, those that are in faith, putting their hands on their belly, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, I loose the mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, inundate these people like never before. Let a fresh infilling of your power and presence be released on their life right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus, you said that you'll baptize us in the Holy Ghost and fire. Do so right now, as you did for me, September 27, 2012. Such a monumental day that I still remember the date, the hour, and the location. Because I've never been the same. Jesus, I pray that you do that. For the many that are watching this broadcast, those who've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, let them be baptized in the fire of God right now. Those who have but need a fresh infilling, like in Acts chapter 4, they said, Lord, fill us again. And they were all filled again. Let there be a fresh infusion of the energy of the Holy Spirit in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, you said we are not to be drunk with wine. We've put away wine. We've put away sin. We're striving to live holy. 
And you said that we are to be being filled with the Holy Ghost. So we receive now by faith the baptism in the Holy Spirit, never to be the same again. Our head is anointed with fresh oil from here on out. Our cup runs, runs over. I loose that mighty baptism in your life. Wherever you're watching, all around the world, be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. There is many of you, many of you, you're feeling the fire of God bubbling up from your spirit. Just let it out. Speak it. And you'll see that heavenly language will come. Come on, speak it out. Thank you, Lord. Out of your belly shall flow rivers. I feel like for many of you, the dam is being Come broken. On. The dam is being broken and the rivers of water are gushing forth right now in Jesus' name. Reto sondo korambambamba. Tongues of fire are coming on you right now as the Spirit of God baptizes you afresh and anew. Kimbrose bravito. Repanda kia robosto. Korande zekla via repaha. Etondo konda zadarabaha sieterende vere kimbrozonda. I want you guys do not pray in English, okay? Right now, those of you that have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is hopefully everybody that prayed, which well, everyone that did pray will get it. I want you to not pray in English, okay? Move your unbelief out of the way. Don't say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And just, we're not teaching you, but just begin to open your mouth by faith and just begin to let it out of you. Let that rivers of living water. Father, we pray rivers of living water begin to flow right now. Tongues of fire would rest upon you right now. In Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Begin to speak it out right now. Speak it out. If you can pray in your heavenly language, then right now, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. It might feel weird for you guys. This is another unknown language. It's the Holy Spirit praying out of you. You're not going to understand it. It might feel weird. Let it out. Just speak it out right now. Lord, fill him with your Holy Spirit. Some right now you, Lord. are getting loosed from demonic come captivity on. and bondage. Isaiah 61 yes. says, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and He will release the captive. Some of you have been captive to sin, captive to... to to sickness, captive to depression, captive to, to anxiety. The Bible says he's not given us a spirit of fear. As you receive the spirit of God, it's not a, he's not a spirit of fear. He's the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. As you're being filled with the Holy Spirit right now, depression is leaving. Come on. Jesus holds the keys of David. He opens and no man can shut. He's opening up doors of joy, doors of peace, doors of healing, and he's shutting the door on sickness, disease, anxiety, depression, and sin in your life. Even as we speak, the Holy Spirit is opening up those prison cells of captivity. The devil wrongfully held you captive in. You're walking in freedom. You'll never be the same again. Health and healing and strength shall be your portion from today. Cancer is dying in your body right now. It's withering up by the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Come on, speak it out. If you got it for the first time, keep speaking it out. Don't stop. Don't stop. Let it flow. Imagine not being able to talk for years and then all of a sudden now you can talk. Let the Holy Spirit pray out of you right now. This is a life-changing moment. Many in the chat said they're receiving it for the first time, but just speak it out and don't stop. We're going to go like another minute or two. Praise the Lord. Him bambasundo rubo shamba do kundia sambando rubo kundia sanderebe. Him 
yamba basu kamba tu tia shamba kon dia samba tia yamba basu ramandi ara mando robo sata da makita shi kamba to bokon da sendi ara ramando robo shanda raba sata raba thank you lord Thank you, Lord. Some of you say, I feel like I'm just muttering. Just begin to speak it. It'll develop. It'll change. It's like a muscle. You That's exercise right. it. You exercise it. It's like speaking. It changes. Keep speaking That's out. Good. Even if you feel like you're just barely muttering, just speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Let it flow. This is by faith, guys. Don't doubt this. Don't doubt this. You have it. You say, I don't know if I have it. You do. You ask for it. He's a good father. He's giving you it. Just begin to speak it out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Groanings that can't be uttered. That's Thank what the scripture Lord. says. So if it feels like it's muttering, it's it's that's the that's the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Groanings that can't be uttered. This was a wonderful broadcast. Thank you, I really Lord. feel like many got baptized in the Spirit. Yes, type one. If you got baptized for the first time with the evidence of speaking in tongues, some of you got baptized and you didn't speak in tongues, it's okay. But if you got baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I want you to type one in the chat right now. Only if it's your first time speaking in tongues, okay? If you've already spoken in tongues, a lot of ones. then type one in the chat because I want to see, yes, a bunch of you. Thank you, Lord. This is so life-changing, guys. I can't Praise say it Lord. enough. You will never, ever, ever, ever be the same. Someone said, my tongue is numb. Just begin to speak it out. Begin to speak it out. Look at all these ones. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Keep it going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Don't be discouraged. Some of you are saying, I haven't gotten it yet. Do not be discouraged. Keep asking. Keep asking, keep praying. Even as we end the broadcast, keep praying, keep believing. One's flying through the chat right now. Thank you, Amazing. Lord. You know, Glory said, this to is Jesus. A moment of prophecy. Yes. Acts 2, in the last days. We're in the last days. Come if on. you don't think we're in the last days, you either live in a <laughs> Amish county or something, Come on. and you don't have access to internet or TV. We are in the last days. We're in the final seconds of the last days. Yes. The, the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is imminent come on and peter prophesied and he was really quoting joel chapter two god you know people everybody's talking about the devil's plan in the last day you know the devil said bible says in the last days will be seducing doctrines of demons and seducing spirits and you know the bible says in the last days the devil will come down having great wrath you know the bible they're all all obsessed with what the devil's about to do in the last days what about what god said come he on. would do in the last days in the last days says god the devil will have a plan but i got a better plan I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. This is a fulfillment of that. Because I, I saw at the beginning, there's people from, from all continents of the earth that are watching right now. And women, males, yes, young, old. Right Literally now, hundreds of ones right now in the spirit. chat. Peter said in the last days, God said, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Young men will see visions. Some of you are getting a vision, a clear vision of where God wants to take you as you're being filled with the Holy Spirit. You were lacking direction. You didn't know why you were born. Some of you were questioning why you even exist. As you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, God's given you a vision for your life. Some of you, I, I strongly believe this. Man, I feel this so strong right now. Some of you are being called into the full-time ministry. Full-time ministry. To do what you just saw done through us, God will begin to do through you. Thank and you don't Lord. wait 15 years for a door to open. Step out. Take what you've got. You know, there's that Pentecostal song I love. I've got it. I've got it in my hands. I've got it in my feet. I've got it. You, you have the Holy Spirit. Take what you've received and begin wherever you're at. Tomorrow, at the workplace. You know, if your anointing only works in a church service, you're, an anoint you're not anointed. Come on. The anointing works everywhere. The anointing works in a bathroom stall, for goodness sakes. The anointing works everywhere. Take it to your workplace. Take the anointing. Jesus went about doing good, anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, and he healed all the press of the devil. Next time someone comes and starts to talk about how much they've been suffering and stuff, instead of saying, I'll keep you in prayer, use the anointing to break them free. Come on. The Holy Spirit is not for a Christian service. He is for Christian service. It's good. He is not for a service. He is for Christian service. The fire of God is not given just for a good meeting, just for a good broadcast. The fire of God comes for service to the king. I want to say this. Someone said, I felt tingling when I prayed, but I don't hear the words to speak. Okay, very important, Charles. 
You're not going to hear the words. When we pray in tongues, we don't hear anything in our head because it's not us praying. It's the Spirit praying out of us. So if you're waiting to hear something before you speak out, it's not going to come. You just got to open your mouth. If you feel the tingling, just begin to open your mouth and robo sabato bokundiasa. Let begin to let the Spirit. It's by faith. It's hard to explain in English words, but it's by faith. So we don't hear the words like in the natural sense. I hear the words or I think of them and I create them. Remember, this is the Holy Spirit. How beautiful is this? The Holy Spirit. I like to say that when we pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit has a prayer meeting on the inside of us. And that's literally <laughs> what happens when we pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit that's is true. praying out of us. Think about that. Yes. God is praying out of us the perfect will of the Father. So, yes, you're not going to hear anything, Charles. You're just going to open your mouth as your mouth's tingling and let it out of you. Guys, I want to make sure that I know we've been live for over two hours, which is amazing. I love it. We have over 3,000 still. Very important. Please make sure that you subscribe to TJ's channel. Um, it's down below. So into the broadcast. Become a monthly partner. We have links. This is free, by the way. For, first, let me say this. For those of you that are in the chat right now that say, how dare you guys ask us to give money? Here's my word for you. Don't give anything tonight. I, I'm actually asking you not to give, okay? If you're bitter, angry about it, just stay here, enjoy, receive for free like you've been for the last two years. We've never charged. All of our content is free. We, I have over 700 videos on my channel, all for free, okay? So you don't have to pay a dollar. So if you're that person, I'm not talking to you. Don't give. We love you. Just stay with us and for free. We don't care. It's okay. Praise the Lord. He'll provide. If you're the other person that says, I want to sow and give, then do it. So into the broadcast, I'm going to sow into TJ tonight like I always do with my guests. And then if you're not a monthly partner, pray about becoming one. The links are in the comments and the description. The on screen, IsaiahSullivan.com slash partner, become a monthly partner. We can't do this without you monthly partners. I'm just going to say it. We can't do it without you guys. TJ, shout out your channel. Where can they find you? Where can they see your stuff? Let them know. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you once again for having me. I know you you always say it. I'm the most uh, recurring guest on the broadcast. And I you'll don't continue to lightly. be. <laughs> I see it as a it's a it's a thing of honor for me. I it's a great privilege, you know, to share a platform. God's given you such a wonderful platform, and for you to invite me on and share the platform to reach this many people with uh, with 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 God's power and stuff is it's not something I take lightly. So I, I really love you and I appreciate you and I back you up. And um, thank you, man. Anyone that speaks ill of you is a, is an idiot. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> there's no other way to say. Go ahead it. and put that clip in your video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if you'd like to plug into our ministry, you can do so. Our YouTube broadcast, Facebook YouTube broadcast, every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we go live every Tuesday and Thursday. We went live this this uh, this this uh, this morning. Well, 1 p.m. Eastern was our first time since we got into our new studio. This is a new studio, new setup, and everything. Let me ask you a question, and, Juan. Uh, stop. How are you going to come on my show? and have a better studio background than me, bro. You know the host has to have the most. Like, I don't understand how you're gonna come show me up like that. Now I'm thinking like, I'm gonna have to redo my studio and change it up. We won't give away your secrets of what your background is, but man, I love it. Go ahead, sorry, I had to just say that. It's not just, a green I'm screen. Insulted. Yeah, it's not this a green screen, guys. I'm insulted that you have a cooler background than me, but go ahead, I digress. I just asked you, I said, what would you, what would you have in a studio? This is a true just, story. This is a true story. He said, what would you do if you redid your studio? And I, you know, I'm not going to say anything, but I kind of, you know, I kind of sent him some stuff. So yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. You're all, you've always been such a great help with all the, you know, technological stuff and stuff. Anyway, so Tuesday and Thursday, 1 PM Eastern YouTube and Facebook. Um, we also release other videos on YouTube. Do subscribe to our YouTube uh it, it's 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 a wonderful tool to build your faith and and walk in victory all, all you know just get on there victory. get on there yeah get on get the on youtube there. get on the youtube tiktok we have a tiktok uh that we that we launched uh you know not too long ago and so i post like 30 40 second snippets that are great you instagram follow me on instagram i post the same the same stuff to instagram and tiktok but they're 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 really like 30 second faith builders we post three times a week they're going to help you also our website you can go and look up uh, all of our events i'm going to be in toronto so if you're in toronto uh june 5th i'm going to be in toronto uh 10 30 a.m and 6 p.m at weston road pentecostal church out in uh, toronto ontario so if you're in the area i'd love for you to join me there it's going to be powerful we're going to see uh we're going to see wonderful wonderful uh, manifestations of the Holy Ghost. And so I'm looking forward to that. So you're invited. It's a free event. All of our events are always free. 
I look forward. Did you just change the background? I changed it to, uh, you know, my voice activated. It moves when I talk. You know, I don't, I don't know. Can you do that on yours? I'm just, no, I'm hey. just wondering here. Is it really yeah, voice activated? Yeah, it's voice activated, bro. So, you know, had to, had to flex a little bit up. there. You know what? Next <laughs> time you come on, bro, I'm going to have to downgrade your video quality to like 480p or something because <laughs> I can't be having you on my broadcast with those cool backgrounds and everything like that. So, you know, someone said <laughs> Isaiah Studios 2011. What? This isn't 2011. I'm genuinely hurt. No, I love it, man. Everyone's laughing in the chat right now. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much how you, you can reach reach our ministry and stuff. Um, so yeah, but mainly subscribe to our YouTube. Like if you're on YouTube and you haven't subscribed to us yet. <laughs> Everyone's laughing uh, in the chat. I'm, I'm Sorry, offended. I'm reading I'm the chat here. Against yeah, against you guys have to be on there. TJ. Bro, thank you so much for being on. I'm going to stay on for a little bit and, uh, you know, show my little background up here. My voice activated uh, lightning background and then read some of these donations. Thank you, bro. I'm going to text you after the broadcast. Thank you so much for being on tonight. Thank you so much. All love right. You, love man. you guys. Take care. Bless All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was an awesome, awesome. I don't know why my face is so greasy. I need to figure out either turn my lights down or something. Maybe because I put lotion on before the broadcast. But my face is like I'm looking like a cheeseburger here again. Thank you guys for being on here. We're going to stay on for a little bit. If you want to give, please give. Some of you have been waiting for, where's it at? Hold on. Where's my giving? Where's my giving links at? Again, if you're a grouchy giver, angry giver, nope, that's an old one. Where's, then don't give. It's very simple. But if you want to sew, you can. It's optional, not required, much appreciated. There you go. Um, the links to give are there. And you know what? I'm actually going to bring my kids in while you guys give, okay? They just got back from a school thing. So we're going to bring all of them in here. So let me move this. Give me a second. See if we could all fit here. And there's the links to give. Give, 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 give in the comments. If you're not a monthly partner, be a monthly partner. Let me grab my kids here. Uh, actually, you know what? They could just come in because the door is unlocked. So we're going to bring them in. Hold on. Go ahead, Alyssa. They're going to say hi to you guys. All of my children are going to say hi to you. Use baby powder. I don't know. That's a little bit weird. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know why I'm so greasy today, tonight. Hi, girls. All the girls are in here. Hold on. Let me take all this off screen so you guys can see them. How is the best way we can do this? Hold on. Hold on. Let's think about this. Let me figure out how to do this. Um, There we go. All right. Hold on. Let me back up here. We're going to try to get all of them on screen here. Come here, baby. Ugh. All right. Here we go. This is all of them. Everybody say hi. Hi. Move my desk down a little bit, okay? There we go. Harvey, don't let your feet get smashed. There we go. Hi. There's Harvey. Look at Nova. No, 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 don't click buttons. Nova, you say hi. hi. Say hi. She's going to that camera. So this is Nova. Where are you at, Journey? There's Harvey. Journey. Wait, there's Harvey. Oh, you're on that side. No, Journey. Justice back here. It's all blurry. Hold on. Yeah, it's because it's... You know, such good quality. It blurs out when there's too many people. <laughs> there. It's because it's the it's focus. And then where's Harvey? Justice? Oh. Justice in the back and Harvest right here. Say hi. Say hi. Can you wave? <laughs> All my pretty girls. All girls. All girls. Nova, can you say hi? <laughs> say I love daddy. Can you say dead day? Can you say dead day? I love no, no, don't click buttons. Don't click buttons. You want to say I love daddy? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Talk in the mic. I love daddy. Yay. I love daddy. Oh, you love daddy? I love daddy. Who's the best preacher in the I world? I love daddy. Oh, look how cute they are. Dad, dad, dad. No, 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 no. Don't click, don't click. No buttons, girls, because you'll end the stream. One button ends the stream. So don't click, don't click. Huh? Here, let me put her up more. There we go. Hi. 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 How come if I go this way? Why would never I go on this side? It's right there. Because it's opposite. It's flipped backwards because oh. on the stream. Okay, don't click any buttons. Girls, the stream will end. If my stream ends randomly, it's because they click something. So, you saying hi? They're right there. There you go. Nova, say hi. What? What? What do you want, baby? Oh, you want the bobblehead? There you go, baby. Is that dad? Who's that? No, don't break them. Who's that? Who is that? That's daddy. Dad, dad? Da, da, da. Can you give him a kiss? Oh, Aww. you're so sweet. Oh, you give the bobble. Oh, no, I can't kiss my own bobblehead. No, no, no. Mm. Oh, don't break him. Don't break him. Don't break him. They already broke the other one. Is that daddy? You giving him kisses? Oh, you're so sweet. 
We love him. Hi, Harvest. Are you chewing gum? Oh, what's on your face? Chocolate. I'm chewing. Did you lick him? Look at Nova. She just licked him. Is that nasty? Do you see Nova's face? Is it gross? Oh, you're chewing candy? I'm chewing candy. Don't, Justice, don't click it. Is that gross? Ew, say gross. Stop, baby. Stop. Say, I love daddy in the mic right here. Dad, dad. Right here, Novi. Dad. Say, I love daddy. Hi. Say, I love grandma. Daddy. Oh. Is grandma uh. now on this? Yeah, say, hi, grandma. Hi, hi grandma. grandma. Hi. <laughs> hi, grandma. Say, grandma. Hi, grandma. Look at how nice my wife's teeth are. Hold on. Uh. Let's just see. Wow, look at those teeth. Oh, they're out of focus there. There you go. Uh. So white and nice. Look at, <laughs> look at the chat. Look at all the emojis they're putting, all the hearts. No. Okay, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say love you. Bye. All right, I'm going to read the donations and then get off. Okay, bye, girls. Love you. Oh, oh, oh. Careful. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, you oh, okay? Is she okay? Her? Yeah. Okay, bye. All right, let me read these donations, guys. Okay. Oh, wow, that's darker. Why is that so dark? Hmm, that's weird. Oh, it's because my lights changed. That's why. Bye, love you, girls. Okay, bye. See you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye, baby. Okay, hold on. Nova wants to say bye to you guys. Come here. Bye. Say bye to the mic. Hold on. Come here. Come here. Say bye. Say bye. Bye. Say in the mic. I love you. Say bye. Say bye. I love you. Say bye loud. I love you. Oh, say bye. I love you. Oh. Wait. Bye. 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 Oh my God. I love you. Cutest girl in the world. Okay. All right, Harvey girl. Bye. Love you. All right, guys, let us read these donations here, and then we're going to jump off because we've been live for two hours and 15 minutes. What is going on here? Okay, let's read these. They're the cutest. I know. You guys have been begging me to bring them on. There you go. They're the cutest. All right, here we go. Thank you guys for donating. If you haven't donated, don't dine and dash. Give, give, give. Thank you, guys. David, thank you. Anonymous, thank you. Someone said, it's a joy to give to your ministry. Thank you, Natasha P. Thanks for amazing videos that have always been bringing me back to God. I appreciate it so much. It's been really hard for me, but I'll stay positive and continue to push better for God. God bless you. Thank you, Natasha. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry, guys, I'm reading fast, but I've been live for a long time. Clinton Terriano said, God bless you, Isaiah. Um, but Pastor Isaiah, order right here, right now, that you add TJ to the Demon Slayer crew right now. It's a long overdue, man. You can feel the presence of God speaking through him. Thank you, Clint. I appreciate you, bro. TJ is part of the Demon Slayer crew. What do you mean? He's a demon slayer too. Anonymous, a powerful word. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Raid Soul. Says such a powerful stream tonight. I received a fresh baptism. Man, I love when you and TJ get together. So powerful. I love you so much, big bro. Uh, God bless you, TJ. Thank you, Raid. Carol Fasenko. Say, got a refreshing outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And then I got your prayer request. Thank you. If, I, if you put a prayer request, I won't read it out loud. Thank you. Warren and Donna said, so good tonight. Thank you so much for this teaching. Thank you, Warren and Donna. Maxim said, how to take many screenshots to remember this moment because I truly felt the Holy Spirit moving through me tonight. Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you so much. Someone said, hurry up. I FOMO. Can't sign off until it ends. I love you. All right. Paul F. Thank you, Paul. What? For that generous donation, Paul F. Said, God is blessing my business, brother. And then I have your prayer request. Um, thank you so much, Paul F. For that generous, generous donation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're a legend. Thank you. Lisa Marie. Thank you so much. Whitney Nyland. So thanks for clarity on not hearing anything before you speak it. I feel like I may have been like the lady that prayed for, for, for 40 years. I feel like I spoke before, but it wasn't actually hearing the words before speaking. No, you won't hear words before you speak or pray in tongues. Just by faith. You just speak it out and the Holy Spirit begins to speak and pray out of you. Anonymous said, have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Anonymous. Robert Trimper said, I received multiple feelings from the Holy Spirit throughout the broadcast. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Isaiah. I'll focus on keeping friendship with the Holy Spirit Kindle as a focal point. Thank you, Robert. Rudy and Bia Perez. Thank you for coming to Robstown and I got your prayer request. Antonio said, blessings to our great Lord for having two men of God to baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Antonio. Cheyenne Dumas said, God bless you and your family. Thank you, Cheyenne. Ray, how's your day going? When TJ said, fill him up, Holy Spirit, I jerked around and accidentally smacked my laptop, almost knocked it to the floor. Laugh out loud. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Edson Miranda said, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Edson. I appreciate you. You're a legend. You're awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Damien at City said, thank you. He was baptized tonight. Uh, any tips on how to witness to coworkers? Share your testimony. That's my tip for you. Share your story, your testimony. If you guys want to give on the website, you can. QR code will take you to the website. You could also give on Venmo. I won't read the Venmo tonight. I usually read it every single time. But again, we've been live for almost two hours and 20 minutes. I know you guys understand. So yes, I'm not going to read the Venmo. I've had a long weekend. 
I took five days off and then I went right into it. Had a long weekend, didn't hardly sleep, had a long day yesterday. Why am I so shiny? I do not understand this. It makes no sense to me. Okay, anyways. And I have no voice. I had a long day yesterday, a long day today. So I'm not going to read all the Venmo just for the sake of time. But if you want to give on Venmo, you can. The links to give are there. Angela Holland, thank you. Guys, listen. If you, ha if you didn't watch my video yesterday, you need to go watch it. My Book of Romans, we started it yesterday. Go watch it. Go watch it. It was really, really good. It, it's sad to me that my Bible teachings get the least amount of views. I don't. It just makes me sad. So they take the most amount of time, and they're, most, they're the most valuable videos on the channel. So go watch that. Get those likes up and views up. Tiffany Hawthorne, love the ministry. You changed my life. Thank you, Tiffany. Lucas, say giving for those who aren't able to. You're doing a great job. Thank you so much, Lucas. Judy, said, love your ministry. Thank you for another great teaching. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, make sure you watch it if you haven't. Go watch it. Go watch it. Okay, you're shiny because of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. Go watch it. Go watch it. It's great. Uh, Bye, little Liddy babies. Oh, you're talking about my babies? I was like, what? But some of you are behind. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay, let's see. Do, do, do. We're going to go green here. The background's making you shiny. TJ wasn't shiny. It's it's actually just, I don't know what it is. My lights, I, I lowered them. I changed my ISO. I changed something. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. It's no big deal. It also could be that I put on lotion before, which is not a good idea. Ellen, thank you. Winter Maldonado. It's an amazing broadcast from you both. Fresh fire. Claiming over my children as well. Thank you, Winter. I'm going to hang out for a bit because people are still loading up their giving. Karina Campbell. So thank you, TJ, for the fire tonight. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much. I'll read the Venmo right when I get off too. So Holy Spirit, thank you. Yes, make sure you guys watch it. The one I posted yesterday. The Book of Romans is amazing. Excuse me. You're not shiny? Okay. I'm glad I'm not. Maybe it's just on my screen. New background coming soon. I, I, I do love my, my studio. I do love my background. The reason why I did this bright lights LED panel background is because it's different and stands out in my niche, which is like preaching the Bible. And that's my goal. It's like, how do we stand out with our thumbnails, with our thing? We don't just want to be another like everybody else, right? So that's the goal, standing out. And I think I did okay with the background. It stands out. I do like it, okay? I do like it. But when I redo my studio, I will have a different studio. But yeah, this one's good still for a while. 2021 upgrade. Yeah, it, this studio is a lot of work, guys. So I'm not ready to change it yet. And there's a lot more I can do that I don't utilize in colors and whatnot. But I do, I like this one. How do I give via Zelle? Isaiah Luke Saldivar at yahoo.com is my Zelle. Isaiah Luke Saldivar at yahoo.com. Luke is my middle name, if you didn't know. Yes, I'm in California, Central California. It does stand out. Thank you. I'm glad it does its job. I'm preaching this Sunday in Stockton, California. This Sunday, Stockton, California. Be there, be there, be there, be there, be there. Yes, I'll continue to teach through the Bible verse by verse and doing topical teachings as well and doing videos, reaction videos and doing my call-in show and doing the podcast and doing the whatever else we do. All right, we're going to keep Zoom deliverance. We do a lot of different stuff. So yes. Pray for Isaiah's vocal cords. Thank you. Mm-mm-mm. What's your race? I am half Hispanic and half Italian. Do a live stream with your wife? I will in the future. Soon. What church? Life song. It's on my website. Everything you guys ever want to find is on my website. Go to IsaiahSaldivar.com. You can find all the links. What's your favorite animal? I have no clue. I don't even know. That Bible course was actually so good. Thank you, Nicole. I pour my soul into them. <laughs> I was there Sunday. Awesome. What times are you preaching? We drove out, but had to leave early when you went to Remnant Church in Modesto. I'm preaching at 8, 15, 9, 30, 11, and 12, 30 in Stockton. Four services. All the info is on my website. Once saved, always saved. No, I have a video on that. Once saved, always saved is not biblical. 
Gas is so expensive to drive now, though. I know, but you can do it. I believe in you. You got this. If you come, I will reimburse you your gas money, okay? If, you, if you're low on funds and you don't have the money for gas, borrow the money from somebody, come to the event, find an usher, worker, prayer warrior, anybody, and say, Isaiah said on his live stream, he will reimburse me for gas and I will pay your gas, okay? I'll pay it through PayPal or Venmo or cash out. Oh, I don't, actually, I don't have cash out, but whatever thing you use, I will pay for your gas in full if you come on Sunday. So anybody watching that can't afford gas, borrow the money, come and I will pay you in full. I won't ask no questions. Whatever the amount is, I'll pay you in full, okay? So I will pay for anyone's gas this Sunday. I don't care if it's 100 people. How do you lose your salvation? By living a life of compromise, sin, and rebellion to God. That's how. If you think once saved, always saved, you literally believe that you can go live in the world, do whatever you want, die, and still go to heaven. That's anti-gospel, anti-biblical. It's not in the Bible. Once saved, always saved. Actually, I should go harder on this. I should make a video going more at this. is an, is an absolutely dangerous doctrine because it lets people think they can live in sin and still be saved. So that's very scary, very dangerous, and it's not biblical. Jesus did not teach once saved, always saved, neither did the apostles. So if you believe that, it's a very scary thing to teach. And a lot of people teach it and it's not biblical. The only way you can come up with that conclusion is if you find other verses to make them say that once you're saved, you're always saved. If once saved, always saved was true, there'd be no such thing as apostasy. There'd be no such thing as going back to the world. There'd be no such thing as leaving the faith. There'd be no such thing as your name being blotted out of the book of life. There's be no need for God to call the churches back in Revelation to repentance and say, I'm going to remove your lampstand. How would you remove it? I'm saved, once saved, always saved. So again, there's so many contradictions to once saved, always saved. Can you lose your salvation and then get it again? Yeah, if you repent and turn to God. Salvation is not you get it and you can never lose it. It's not how salvation works. It's a being saved that we're all going through. Why aren't you exposing the mark of the beast? Because the mark of the beast can't exist until there's an antichrist and there's no antichrist right now. So that's why. Regardless of what you think the mark of the beast is, there's no mark of the beast yet until there's an antichrist. A, a public antichrist. Yes, I will pay for anybody's gas. Just come Sunday and talk to me or talk to one of the ushers and they'll bring you to me. Don't say it just so I can talk to you, but be real and I'll pay for your gas. No problem. No shame, no embarrassment. Make sure you have PayPal though, or like Venmo or something so I can actually pay you. Mm -mm. I live in Stockton. Oh, good. I'll see you there. I'm coming to your hometown. I thought the Pope was the Antichrist. No. No, Obama's not either. How's vacation with the fam? It was amazing. We went camping. We went camping and we had a great time. And I'll be camping again in a few weeks with the family. Our once a year trip is going to be in a few weeks. So I'll still be live Monday, but I will not be live Tuesday or Friday because I'll be camping that whole week. But I'll let you guys know. All right. I should probably go get off here now because I've been live for almost two and a half hours. And did I eat today? I don't remember. I don't, I think, I don't know, but I'm very, very hungry. Elon Musk is not the Antichrist. No. You're a true servant of God. I've yet to hear any pastor ever say they'll pay for gas for anyone. I just want people there to hear the word of God and to get changed. And so whatever we have to do to make that happen, we have no problem doing. Get a receipt from them. I trust you. I don't need a receipt. It's not like a write-off or anything. Just, it's okay. I trust you. If you're going to come and lie about gas to get money from me, then you, you need the money more than I do. Like, really, if you're going to come and lie and say, I paid you $100 in gas for me to give you $100, I will still give you $100 because you need it more than me. So no problem. But yes, please drive out if you can. Again, I'll pay for anybody's gas on Sunday. I don't care if it's a thousand of you. All right. Well, <laughs> hopefully a thousand of you don't come and say, I need money for gas because that'd be a lot of money. But I mean, I'll still do it. Even if it is a thousand of you, I'll still do it. We'll go into the savings. All right. We'll go. We'll dip into the savings account. I don't care. 
I give money to homeless people and people on the corner all the time, and I don't ask for a receipt. Just give it to them. When's your next live stream? Friday night. We'll be live. But we'll have content uploaded every day this week, as usual. Gas for my plane? I mean, if you have a plane, if it's not that much, yeah. But if you have a private jet, I'm not paying your gas. If you own a plane, you don't need money for gas. Let's just put it that way. Someone said, don't take your 4x4 diesel truck. The address is on my website, Nicole, IsaiahSaldemar.com slash schedule. You can find the address. No, I don't need a receipt. Thank you, though. Someone's like, I'm going to take my eight miles per gallon car, my RV. Go ahead. It's okay. I'll pay for that. Jets do not use fuel. Isn't jet fuel a thing? What do you mean? What do they use? What if I fly out? Are, are you asking me to pay for your flight? Um, I'm not going to pay for everybody's flights because flights right now are like $1,000. And if I say that and 100 of you show up, uh, I don't have $100,000 to give you. So, yeah. That's a whole nother level. If you're really struggling and you reached out, I would pay for your flight, but I'm not going to publicly in front of 1600 people say, whoever wants to fly out, I'll pay for your flights. I don't have the finances to do that. So yeah, especially because a lot of you are international. All right. And flights internationally are thousands of dollars. Mm -mm -mm. All right. I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. And I will see you guys on Sunday at Life Song. We'll be actually, you know what? I'll see you Friday. I'll see you Friday and then I'll see you Sunday. And pray for me. I'm preaching four times. It's 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 a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. So pray for me. All right. Yeah, some of you are reaching. All right. Just I said I'll pay for your gas. If you drive a car or an RV, I will pay for your gas. Be be reasonable. Okay. Be reasonable. But yeah, I'm not paying for flights because a lot of you live in other countries. And if 100 of you show up with a $1,000 flight, then yeah. I don't, again, I don't have $100,000 to give you for our flights. All right. Reeled said, don't listen to the satanic man. Love you, Reeled. Enjoy being banned for good. Goodbye. See ya. Reeled is mad that I, I won't say that the V word is the mark of the beast. So... There you go. Enjoy being blocked, sir. Enjoy that ban. It's so enjoyable to ban people. I don't know. There's something enjoyable about hitting people with a ban hammer. All right. Love you guys. See you guys on Friday. And then I'll see you guys on Sunday. Love you. Bye. Love you guys. Have a good night. Where's my ending screen? Good night. See you guys. Love you. Have a good night. Sleep well. Um, they they were mad that I don't call out the V A C C. You know what? As the mark of the beast, and it's not the mark of the beast. So I'm not gonna call it. Uh, you could think it is, but according to the Bible, it's not. And and we're biblical here, not not opinionated or political. So. That's what they were mad about. Because I wasn't willing to call out that as the market beast, they said that I was going to hell and I was uh, like Satan or something. So they got banned permanently. Praise the Lord. Go spread your uh, propaganda somewhere else. Guys, the market of the beast, there has to be a beast before there's a mark. So let's just stay biblical. I have a video on it though if you want to go watch it on the market of the beast. Can you pay my electric bill? I have a Tesla. I got you, tech. Uh, it's going to be really cheap. So yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay your supercharging fee. No problem.